We did it. We are here. Welcome everyone to Foul Territory Live. Every single weekday during spring training, we'll be here 11 a.m. Eastern time for you. Scotty Braun, AJ Przinsky, Todd Frazier, Eric Kratz, the whole crew with you. So first off, does this feel like opening day vibes to you? It's a little different. It is, right? It's a little different than normal opening day vibes. It's uh, it's more a little more exciting. Opening day was oh. more of like a nervous <laughs> butterfly. I got to, you know, not screw up. But this is more of a, an excitement kind of deal. Wait, so more nervous than opening day or less nervous than opening day? Uh, less nervous for this. Yeah. Because this I can control. You know, when you're facing like Max Scherzer on opening day and you're like, man, he's going to throw me that high cheddar and I'm going to strike out. Like, I can't control that. But at least this I have a little bit more control over. So, yeah. Fraser, that, that sounds a little more difficult. What's up? Yo, let's go. Let's loosen up. Were you nervous this morning, Fraser? Getting up? I'm, no, no, I'm never nervous, man. This is exciting times, man. This is what we've always wanted to do, always talked about, get things going for the players. We've got some exciting things coming up, some great interviews, man. This is stuff that I've always wanted to do off the field of baseball and now get players' perspectives. Uh, the nerves are out the window, man. This is, a, this is a piece of cake. We're going to have some fun here. I hope everybody's ready for this. Kratzy, how you doing over there, big dog? Gucci, ready to go. I'm the most nervous of three of you guys because I don't have any all-star trophies or anything to show off. So if I screw up, it'll just be another team. I don't think there's any other shows, but you know, as, as I went through teams, I don't. I hope they're not going to push me through shows like they push me through teams. <laughs> <laughs> Good news, Kratzy. There's not enough shows. You make a few rounds, that's it. So we'll keep you as long as we can, okay? Let's go. Okay, so a couple things I want to do here to get everyone familiar with, with why we are doing this, why we're getting together, and also who we are. Let's do intros. So when teams do intros, like let's say it's a team like the Rays or one of those teams with a ton of turnover, um, have you been on a squad where suddenly like half the team is different from the year before? No. No? Anyone? No. Well, Kratzy, like, how did you get everyone's yeah, names say, down? Been on every team. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> good news is we've got Kratzy. How did you get everyone's names down and did you do any of the corny oh hey everyone state your name and like where you're from and all that i got a different idea for it but how did they do it with the ball clubs no you just you just go through and you try to learn everybody the players names that was easy man when you get down to like the assistant clubby and the third trainer <laughs> and you know the second <laughs> lunch guy that's tough and i and by the time i got you know about to my sixth or seventh team I had become very confident in the fact that I would just be like you know they'd be like oh hey what's up I'm Tim hey I'm Tim well you know it's Tim Joe Johnny Steve it's like I just say hey you know what I'm not gonna remember your name so you're hey man and what's up buddy for the first two weeks did you actually say that Kratzy like hey yeah Eric Kratz nice to meet you I'm not gonna remember your name yeah, like it's because you're going through the clubhouse and you're carrying half your bags. Well, that's in the minor leagues. I guess in the big leagues, they carry your bags for you. But you're going through the clubhouse and I'm like, look, man, I'm going to try to remember your name. So just give me some grace. But that was that was not until like the sixth or seventh team. The first few teams, I was sitting here like trying to do like word association, like Barry's big. So I need to remember Barry. Todd has got weird toes. So Todd's <laughs> toes, like... It didn't work. It, it was it was tough. I felt like Big Poppy, like trying to figure out names. It was it was bad. All right. So here's what we're gonna do to, to intro everyone. So Fraze, you can start instead of me saying your your accolades and, and what you've done in the career. You do it, okay? And you can do it in whatever way you want. Like what what accolades were you most proud of? How would you describe yourself? Sometimes when I was doing interviews, I would say, "Hey, give me your scouting report." But how would you? introduce yourself like if you were in the middle of Europe or Asia and someone didn't know who you were but they knew a little bit about baseball yeah I mean that's a very interesting way to start I would say hey Todd Frazier uh two-time all-star uh home run derby champ in 2015 played for six different teams uh including the Mets and Yankees uh which are pretty close to my hometown here uh just a fun loving teammate get to know me a little bit and we'll have a good time man I saved the guy doing the Heimlich maneuver one time and uh, that's probably on top of one of my uh, accolades there that's that's pretty much top notch and I'm I'm here for the people man so if, that's that's me in a nutshell dude let's get it going I'm in the wrong studio can you do Heimlich 
No, no, I can't get around your biceps. Look how big your body can't get my arms around you. <laughs> Who did you save, Frage? Can we well, know? it happened in Pittsburgh, man. Me and Ryan Ludwig, uh, we were eating at the Capitol Grill after uh, an early afternoon game. And next thing you know, guys choking to the right. I ran over, got my arms around him, gave him two Heim Heimlich Maneuver uh, pumps. And you, you feel like you're in a cartoon. It's going to come out. It never did. He had to go in there and get it. Tell you this piece of steak. I mean, I've never seen it look like the size of a, of a cell phone, man. It was unbelievable. So, uh, God willing, I hope he's okay. I never heard from him again. He ended up paying for a bill, and I couldn't eat for for a day after that, man. I was I was reeling a little bit. So, hopefully, that guy's still doing well. Did you tell him to like chew a steak a little better? For yeah, you? I, 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 I like, could. Smaller pieces. I don't know. Nah, he went right back to eating it too. I don't know how or why. I I, I would have been I would have been based bad. Ryan Ludwig had a little thumb. Yeah, a little, a little pop Through in the left, bat. Hit right. Yeah. All right. So AJ, your turn. Uh, geez, AJ Przinski, and uh, I don't really have all the accolades. I mean, you know, I got. If no, I'm going off phrase, I can go. Daddy. You know, <laughs> yes, two-time All-Star, World Series champion. Uh, you know, uh, geez, three-time wrestling champ. Uh, and I get to sit next to Scott Braun and his biceps every day. <laughs> I mean, on the show. So that's really kind of all I got. You know, a couple kids. You know. Pro name dropper, Kratzy. No. Right? Yes. Big time. It's going to be names for days. <laughs> <laughs> nope. 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 If Not you're anymore. famous and you live in Florida, AJ probably knows you or has played golf with you. Correct? 100%. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Kratzy, I mean, AJ's like, nah, I don't really have much, you know? Just some, uh, some All Star, a little uh, World Series action. You're up. Man, how would I explain my career or how would I introduce myself? Well, my introducing myself is way more than baseball. So I got a wife. I got three kids, two sons and a daughter. I got a dog that's about 18 pounds. And I've played baseball for probably too long. But I think in my mind, just long enough. And now also everyone on social, um, your dog, what's your dog's name, by the way? Bella. Bella. Bella, Bella made a little cameo this morning on Twitter. She did good. That was her exercise for the day. Now she'll lay out in the sun on our hardwood floor and do zero. Nice. All right, throw your handles out there, and then we'll swing to what we're doing here on a daily basis. So, Kratzy, you've been on Twitter for a bit. You're, apparently, rumors are going to get a little more active on, on Instagram for everyone, too, that wants to see photos of you for some reason. Yeah, I'm not sure if they want to see photos of me or if they want to see photos of other stuff that's been going on. But yeah, my my Instagram <laughs> is at Eric F. Kratz. And in Twitter, it is ekratz19. That was given to me way back in the day. 2014 is how long I've been on. And AJ Priority has more followers on Twitter than I do. <laughs> is that true? Dude, no. We're not even I don't even want to go into the Twitter Instagram stuff. Like let's let's try to stay. I mean, I'm happy for you guys that you guys like it so much. You're on Twitter now. You I, tweeted I, on I, your own this I morning. I know. I did just because I wanted to try it. I wanted to try it out. Like, All right. I wanted to try it How'd out. How'd it go? How'd it feel? Yeah, it felt terrible. I felt like just I don't know. I feel sleazy. For some reason, I feel what like you feel sleazy. I feel sleazy you, like, you give takes all day when you're doing. I know, shows but and not. Games. I don't think any. I mean, people. I don't know. It just feels weird. Like I'm writing something on my phone. And it says whatever it says, but it's just like, is there really someone that really cares what I'm thinking about? Yes. Like, do we need to hear people's thoughts 24 hours a day? Well, I have a question. And, yes. Like I, don't, like, I don't want people to know what I'm doing, where I'm at. Like, you just did that every day of your life as a, as a player. Yeah, I don't After do that the anymore. game, the media would come anymore, But they though. still want to know. That's why you're here. Otherwise, yeah. we wouldn't be here. It's true, but I don't have to t broadcast. I guess I do now, so never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Kratz, you go. Oh, no. I just, he said, does anybody want to hear about it? I want to hear about what AJ does. I yeah. Mean, he, you he got lives, one guy. He lives in celebrities. Oh, gosh. No, I don't. I live, I live in uh, do whatever my wife tells me land is where I live in. <laughs> <laughs> I live in following my kids around to sporting events land. Yes. Frage, so you watched Pierzynski. Did people want to hear what he had to say? Yeah, was without a doubt. a walking sound bite. Shit. Anyway, this guy, I mean... Everybody wants to know what he says, man. He's talking smack to every player that comes to the batter's box Lying. discreetly, discreetly, Lying. undercover. Lying. He's got his mask on. I mean, shoot. You try talking to this guy, it's like trying to get through a wall, man. He's all business. You know, he wasn't <laughs> he wasn't the happy go lucky guy everybody thought he was. No, I'm just kidding. He was he was a good dude, but he wanted to win, man. I'll give you credit, man. You were a beast when you were out there. 
you didn't really want you didn't really want to deal with anybody else besides who was thrown on the mound. Don't give me that look. I can see you from across no, the line. No, and, I didn't, uh, you're right. You're right. No, I didn't care. I didn't care. It. That was a problem. That no, was a problem. It wasn't. You wanted to win, and that's I, I can respect that. So people do want to know what you were thinking. They want to see, you know, what was going through your mind during that, you know, Mark Burley outing or something else. And people need to know that. So we're gonna get yeah. after it on the Twitter world. We're gonna let we're gonna let them know for sure. Well, get here's after. Here's the problem. If people knew it was going through my mind, they wouldn't believe it. So that's why, especially now, during those now games. Now it's I, time to make them a believer. I there were things that were going through there that are not allowed <laughs> on any space. Well, <laughs> until now. <laughs> until now. Exactly. All right. So before we get into news of the day, and also, um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but who's joining us today? Uh, I believe Adam Wainwright. Adam Wainwright. Okay. Yeah. Live, too. This shit's live. Obviously, we'll post it for you wherever you want it afterward. But Adam Wainwright's joining us. Uh, umpire Ted Barrett joining us as well, and we got some some big boy guests the rest of the week and next week too, which we'll announce later if you hang around with us. But like, why are we doing this? What, in your mind, and you watch more TV and listen to more baseball talk than almost anyone I know. I mean, I've, I've been around this guy a few weeks. Like, there is a TV in every part of your life, right? <laughs> like, yeah, you don't, consu- don't remind me. You I consume. Mean, you consume. I sometimes get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I have one in my car. Don't let's not tell anybody that. Yeah. I do have one in my car. So yeah, exactly. Navigation. You're looking at your navigation. It yeah, just happens of course. To be direct just happens TV. to be direct TV. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we doing this though? Like, and there's a few layers here. First off, say whatever the fuck we want about the news of the day and what's going on in the game. And yes, we we can curse news to you. I'll try to. I'll try to contain myself at times, sorry, mom, but also for players, right? Like yeah. we're around players all the time. They want a spot where they can talk shit, say whatever they want, show us their shoe collection, slice up the rules of the game. What else? I just, for me personally, I'm doing this for what you said. For one, I want a space for players to be themselves, be natural, relax, do whatever they want, talk about whatever they want. And then also, I love talking ball. So let's talk ball with these guys. We're going to have umpires. We're going to have retired players. We're going to have current players and big name guys. And it's just fun talking to these guys. Why? Because I don't know a lot of these guys. I know them as a as a, someone that I've run into, said hello, talked to for five minutes, but I've never sat down and actually talked to these guys. And that's what I want to do. I want to learn about these guys. And these players also want fans and other people to know about their lives outside of their game. They're not robots. So we want to show their personality. And this is really the only place they can do it. Plus, I, when it's player on player in terms of the interviews, Kratz, you know, you guys can give them shit in a different way from anyone else on the planet. For sure. For sure. And I think that's everything what AJ said is spot on. And I think, you know, for me, one of the reasons that I think this show is awesome and I jumped at this opportunity is because I got so much from the game. Now I don't have, you know, I'm not playing anymore. I, you know, I feel like there's an opportunity to give back and there's unique ways to give back now than there was when me and AJ first started, when Todd started. And it's always changing. And this is a way for players to, connect with fans like I think other sports do. And now we're going to do it with baseball. Mm -hmm. And by the way, uh, hashtag FT live, say if you're on Twitter, you have questions for us, comments, whatever, we'll mix that in every single day about your team, about what we're talking about, about these guys personally, and questions for our guests too. Like Wayno should be joining us pretty soon. So we'll probably do Wayno and then we'll go over news and how we're going to do things. We're going to throw down on some games too, phrase. So what do you think about what these guys said, but also you, you and me are going to make some money on regular season nights this year, right? <laughs> it puts a smile on my face, dude, because I love that <laughs> stuff. I love every second about it. Um, you know, hopefully making some other people some money too as yes. well. But for me, I think the exciting part is just having the games and then talking to guys that just had that game or had that crazy performance and getting them online and just getting in their head and asking them, you know, what what goes through your mind when you're, you know, in a rut? What goes through your mind when you're having an awesome 10, 20 games in a row? Like, so these young kids can understand that baseball is the hardest sport in the world and they can understand that, listen, an 0 for 4, 0 for 10 day is not going to ruin your whole season. So uh, what I try and instill in those young kids is that, you know, worry about the next day. Don't worry about, you know, exactly what happened today. The sun will come up and these these guys are just like us. And I want, we want to get their story out. We want them to tell them about themselves and what they do in the off seasons and what charities they got and uh, what are they looking to looking forward. Like they're just they're regular people like us. And uh, 
this is this is the best part of it. Anything goes, and that that's that's where I'll leave it at that. Anything goes here, which is awesome. Can you imagine Fraze your coach? In a good way, <laughs> yeah. No, like in any way, like you know, there's some bat throwing. There's some. There's <laughs> Listen, some you got tossed yelling, the other day from a game, didn't you? <laughs> you got a you got, tickle, at a you got, you got a tee, like, right? I can't even imagine you. Like if I was a kid, I was a 12 year old kid, and I look up and Todd Frazier's my coach, and he's over there throwing it throwing his hat, getting technicals at basketball games. Like, you're talking about teaching these kids the right way. I mean, you're teaching them how to snap right now. No, listen, I'm from Jersey, bro. Come on. You you know better than that, man. We teach them to be tough, rugged. Uh, we're not afraid of nothing. And if you see the coach getting after, that means I care. That's all. It means I care for them. And I'm going to go out of my way. I'll get the technical foul so young Johnny can relax and understand that I got his back. That's all it is. So, um, you know. Well, it's a shortage of umpires up here, so I got to be careful. You know, I love our umpire, Teddy. I'm going to talk to him about that when he gets on later, but we got to be careful about exactly what you say. You know, in high school here, if you do get thrown out of a game, you got to go to a class, um, four different classes, I think it is, to uh, get back into the mix of things. I don't know what happens in Florida or Pennsylvania. I know you guys are both high school coaches or whatever, what have you. So No way. Wait, Frange, is that true? Yes. I mean, I got thrown out of a high school basketball game and I coaches. showed up Co the next no, day. Coaches. Oh, coaches. If, if, if a coach gets thrown say, out, <laughs> they got to go to a class and um, be taught the right way to coach. So you, you got to be very careful around here. So The fact that you're at the point where you even get ejected in a high school game is like insane <laughs> to me. Like, how are you getting this mad that you're going to no. even think about getting ejected? Well, you, well, we're going to talk about this too. You got to know the rules. The rules are changing and evolving. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not just Major mm. League Baseball, Little League. Um, uh, travel ball, high school, college. Get to know your rules here a little bit, AJ. And then what? You know, we're gonna have. It's gonna be a blast when when we know about everything that's going on in this world. I can't wait. We've got rule changes in this sport that we're gonna get to, and and of course, this is our first day on. We'll be on every weekday live, but we'll go over all the off se off season uh, shit that went on too. So for rules, I'm gonna save most of that for Ted Barrett today because we're talking to him, so we can go over it with with an ump. But um, let's run through some news right now. So let's start with over the past week, Manny Machado. You know, we were running through some rehearsals and you guys did good work. We were like, all right, I think this show's going to play. And we were going over the Padres at the time. What was it like four or five days ago, Kratzy, when we're saying, hey, uh, I think you should give Machado a little more respect. I think they were offering him what if you did all the combined totals. And I'll try to be the numbers guy, but my brain's been spinning. Um, less than, than what they had just given Bogarts. And the whole thing with Machado always, too, is, I mean, this guy who, who entered the league at a young age. So you get rewarded for hitting free agency early. So he's got the extension now um, through the 2033 season. He'll be 41 years old um, that year, 11 years, 350 mil. So Padres get it done. And also, like, I want to clap it up for the Padres this offseason in the last few years. Thank you. Small market, that's not a thing, Kratzy. This team owns the city right now. Their fan fest was so ridiculous. Like they said, it was kind of a, a glorious disaster because I think it was I don't I don't know if it was 50k or 100k that showed up to the place because they're so fired up there. Yeah, I saw the difference in the I don't know what it was like 10 years ago at the fan fest, and then this year, it shows. It, it show. I mean, there's nothing. Yes, they got an incredible team on the field, but what does that translate to? It translates to wins. It's going to translate to so many people in that city clamoring to get to games. And if anybody's been to San Diego, there's a lot to do out there. There's a lot to do. And if you don't put a product on the field, you ain't going to get people to come out. But they're going to come out now for a long time. Yeah, it's the, it's the best weather in the world. We always we, That's what number one thing we know about in baseball. We always tell, hey, where do you want to play? Well, if we're looking at the best weather, we're looking at San Diego. It's always – Calm, cool, a little light breeze at 65, 70 range. Um, yeah, let's go here, man. Let's let's start paying these players more. I mean, listen, when Manny Machado's 40, 41, he's gonna put the numbers up that he used to. Uh, most likely not. I mean, but you know, sky's the limit, you never know. But yeah, let's go. The the Cohen's of the world that are, are doing stuff with the Mets, just dropping numbers on people, getting guys over. They they have the money, man. It's time to spend again. You know, we went through this little lull where we didn't know what was gonna happen, the market. Everybody talks about the market going up and down. No, it's basically what the owners wanted to do, man. They, they have the money. These guys have billions of dollars, and it's, it's just time to keep on going, man. And I, you know, I hope for the best for all the players. But for San Diego, oh, 
Things are looking up and up, man. That is a chunky payroll right there, AJ. Good. Exactly. Good. That's not even including you, Darvish, or Joe Musgrove. That's right. right. Those are just – and then they got to get Juan Soto signed at some point. But I love it. Like, they, these guys are saying, listen, there is no really small market team. I know these teams are saying, oh, well, you know, we don't make as much money in the, the Pirates and the Rays and these teams. But there's money. If you spend money, fans will react and they will come out to these games – Listen, I was in San Diego when they played the Dodgers in the DS last year, and they beat the Dodgers. That place was absolute – I don't even know what the word was. It was the, one of the best atmospheres I've ever seen for any game, let alone a postseason game where they kind of slayed the big bad Dodgers. The fans were going crazy. They had the goose. They had the goose with chains running around, like <laughs> doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And you know what the owner did? He went out and made another splash with Bogarts. Keep Machado, the guy who's been there the last few years, He's doing it right. He doesn't care. He's like, listen, if I spend the money, I will sell this park out every single night and I'll get the concession money, the revenue, the TV will want to pay us more because our team is better. He's looking at it on the front end. I'll spend, but I'll make it on the back end. That's the way all these owners need to look at it. You're right. Because also, if you think about it, Kratzy, yeah, what's the value of the San Diego Padres if, if you ever want to sell that thing? I don't know what it went for last time, and I don't even know what the value was. You know, Forbes puts their numbers out like a couple years ago. I bet you it's like double now. Absolutely. Absolutely it is because you're putting you're putting so much more out on the field. You're giving the people of San Diego a reason to cheer and to watch, and it's, it's awesome. The, you spend, you get it back. Frage, Machado, you Listen, play against him. I, 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 I'm a Machado fan for one. I, he's like, I tell everybody like, who, who, who are you afraid of when they got up to the plate? One was Albert Pujols. I mean, every time they got up plate and two was most definitely Manny Machado. Cause he, when he pulls that ball down the line, you don't have time to react. You're trying to help your pitcher out and you know, he's not bunting the ball. And, and two, you play back as far as you can. I didn't have the arm like him. He's got one of the, he's got probably the best arm at third base in the league. I put him up against anybody, even in the outfield. He's got an absolute cannon. I've seen him on the mound before throwing, you know, low 90s. Um, I'm just happy for him, man. It's, he's a guy that, you know, been through some ups and downs, but always been consistent hitter. And he's going to be – he's top five hitter in the league right now. And um, I, I, I'm just – I'm hoping San Diego stays healthy and they just keep climbing because it's it's their, it's their division to take this year, you know, especially with Gavin Lux going down. That's a big, uh, big bob shell to the Dodgers. So – Good luck to those guys. They've got to be the favorites right now, no? They were, probably the, they were the favorites probably before Lux. Yeah. I mean, you know, poor Gavin Lux and the Dodgers, but they were the favorites, I think, for a lot of people before he even got hurt. Mm -hmm. I mean, they made the moves. So and they beat the Dodgers in the playoffs. They were right there with them last year. They, they The Dodgers didn't make the gigantic moves. The Padres did. And if you, again, Crash said, if you go to San Diego, there is no other sport. There's no basketball. There's no hockey. There's no football. They are Padres, Padres, and surfing. I mean, Padres and surfing. <laughs> and every time I do a Padres game, they bring out somebody and give them a surfboard. So, I mean, it's Padres and surfing. Uh -huh. Which you can handle in the morning, in the afternoon, then you hit the game at night. But you're right. It's a scene there right now. It's a home field advantage there it's right absolutely, now. It's absolutely, absolutely. Huge home field advantage. And when you walk into that park and you see all the Padre fans and they're, you know, they had the, the, the bling chain that Machado had and they had the, the everything going. I mean, that place is where it's at right now. There's, a, there's still a guy who eventually is going to be a free agent, too, in Juan Soto. And you're going to have – here's my problem, too, Kratzy. Some fans are programmed like, oh, well, I guess they're, they're going to have to let Soto leave when he hits free agency. No, not necessarily. I mean, you've got like a, a core four here. You can run it with him, too, if you want. I, I'd be trying to throw him extension offers left and right right now. I I would be very surprised if they haven't. I would – when when we can get Juan on, when whenever – AJ can hook it up where Juan Soto comes on. We can talk about the extensions <laughs> that we see. Juan's not in my Rolodex. He's in he's in the celebrity Rolodex. But the uh, yo get get him extend. They have they have the money. Listen, it might cost you four hundred and fifty to five hundred million. But what's going to happen first is the Dodgers are going to throw five hundred plus at Shohei next year, and then the Padres, after winning the division this year, are going to say. All right. Well, we'll give one thirteen for five fifteen. I'm in. That's a lot. lot. You think you think they're going to give him that much money? It all depends on what Shohei gets. No chance. See, I, I don't I don't agree with you there. I I think he's worth a lot. I don't think he's worth that much though. I mean, 
we've we've had these conversations before about Juan Soto. He he came over. Listen, I know he's a good player, and I think he deserves all the money too. He needs to have a big year this year. He can't be going up there walking every time, trying to you know get on base. He's one guy they're looking to drive the ball, do those opposite field homers, doubles, and you know RBIs. I, I need him to supply a little bit more. I know he's getting acclimated. I understand that, but I'm going to need some bigger things from him this year, man. Hey, Fraze, I heard you've got a comp for Machado's numbers so far, too. Career numbers. Yes, yes. I saw this the other day. Him and him and Rizzo, exactly, exactly the same numbers. Wow. I, I find that amazing. Um, yeah, we can we can have an over under on this. Who's going to get? You know, who's going to reach the thousand mark first in runs? You know, four hundred doubles, home runs. I mean, that that could be a good little bet we talk about. But these two are both amazing. You know, one from the left side, one from the right. Um, that's a good combination right I'll, there. I'll take Machado wins and career numbers and all those. I'll take that <laughs> right now. Whatever you want to bet, Frazier, I got career it. numbers. Yeah, he's I, saying who's going to read this first. I'm, I'm just saying that's not. I'm just saying in the career department, I'll take Machado across the board. <laughs> also, oh, Machado's going to end up making what? I mean, hey, Rizzo's doing fine, but Machado's yeah. going to end up making a, a few hundred mil more. We'll see what happens, man. Anything can happen in New York. You know that, AJ. Watch out. <laughs> no, I'll still take Machado. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's saying he just signed an eleven-year deal. I think Machado is going to over the not long all run. time. He's saying I said like, all time. Right. Well, I can't make my own bet. No, you can, but oh, okay. I mean, you got to be a little more. Yeah, you got to be realistic. A little realistic. Yeah, exactly. That's all Come we on. ask. All right, let me get an injury uh, note in there while we're on the Padres. Joe Musgrove going to be out for a bit. Uh, broke his big toe in the weight room, dropped a kettlebell on it, which sounds incredibly painful. Kratzy, if there's one thing that I can actually weigh in on, I've never done it. I think I've maybe dropped a weight on my foot once, but like a kettlebell? I mean, well, it's a five-pound kettlebell. Maybe it's not too bad, but I'm imagining Joe Musgrove throwing around, what, 35, 40? Oh, at least. He's definitely he's definitely More? going way way farther than that. Well, it depends what he's doing. Is he doing swings? Well, I mean, he's not. I mean, he's not a CrossFitter. He's in there, you know, making sure his shoulder is stable and all those like band <laughs> exercises. Like, like Scotty, you're the one. You're the one with the bicep curls. You're you're maxing out on seventies on the bicep curl like Sal Fasano used to back in the day. You know, we're not all we're not all cardio like pitchers and Todd were. And I didn't need to be a baseball bod. You're right. Well said. Well said. Have any of you have any of you dropped a weight on yourself before? No, I can't say I have. I I don't think I've put enough on there to make it even hurt. To be honest with you, so (laughs) for me, I mean, I've seen guys doing uh, Turkish get-ups after games um, with you know 110 pound kettlebells. So I don't know exactly what Joe's doing, but whatever it was, it had to be. I mean, if you're doing the the lift ups with these things, I mean, it couldn't hurt that, but he must have had it up high in the air because that comes down on your toe. I mean, and, and you're out for a significant amount of time. I mean, usually you just play through it if you, if, if you break a toe because there's nothing you can really do. He must have really did some damage there or something. So he needs a spotter now for everything. Yeah. I, I would have, I'm serious. I would have PTSD. I'd be like, if I, when I come back at first, I'd be like, somebody around no. me. Come on. <laughs> come on. Maybe you. Look at those arms. I mean, look at it. I mean, give us some. Can we get a. No, not yet. Also, we're on audio, too. We're on. It's this show one. I mean, come on. We don't want all. We got to build an audience here. We don't want all the ladies to, uh, to to go crazy their first show. It's the only thing that I can help this show with from a player perspective. But uh, yeah, for Musgrove, I mean, all star last year, AJ, five year, $100 million extension. Um, back in July, otherwise he would have been a free agent after 22, 22. and actually probably would have gotten more when you think about it. When you look at what this off season was, he would have gotten more. Oh yeah, than but that he, five hundred. Something sometimes uh, money. You can't tell uh, Frazier this because you know he doesn't get this part. But money isn't everything, <laughs> Frazier. Uh, You're funny. He uh, he wanted to stay in San Diego. He's born out right there in San Diego. His parents own a coffee shop that has made more money since he became a Padre than they ever yeah. probably thought was possible because, you know, he threw the first no hitter in Padres history. So money isn't everything. Sometimes happiness, you might've got 115, 120, but you, know, you start getting a hundred million, Scotty. I mean, what's the, what's the difference? Tough to say no. Plus you didn't know what the free agent market was going to look like, but yeah, for the pods, I mean, they'll be okay on the short term. I mean, do we have one thing that Padres have, they have starting pitching. Yeah. 
So they have plenty of starters. The question for the Padres was the back end of their bullpen. They went out and got Hader last year. But they filled in some of those guys, the Martinez and, and the, uh, the other guy that was so good in the playoffs. Uh, Suarez. Oh, Suarez. Suarez, yeah. hell yeah. But yeah, I mean, but their back end was what they were worried about, right? So they kind of shored that up when they got Hader. But they have Darvish, they have Musgrove, they have Snell. They got a ton of starters that they can use. I mean, the bigger deal, Kratzy, is Gavin Lux going down, which, you know, I saw you put up a little thing yesterday, but I mean, that fucking sucks. I mean, that's ACL. You're about to be the starting shortstop for the Dodgers. They're letting the, the young guys kind of step up a little bit this year. They didn't spend as much as they usually do, but they've got great talent, uh, young talent, a lot of farm system action, and, and he's going to be out until next year. That's It's tough. I, I, I think as the days go by, the team's going to realize – you know, Miggy Rojas was probably going to play a bigger role. But as far as for Gavin Lux, this this was going to be his opportunity. And, yes, the Dodgers didn't spend a whole lot of money. It's okay. They're not a small market team. They're going to spend a lot of money. And for Gavin Lux, he was looking at being a starting shortstop. Look at what the starting shortstops have gotten paid. Do you think he thought, you know, my base right now is I can – you know, I can do what Dansby Swanson did for his six years in Atlanta, and I think he got 177 million, something like that. You know, I it's it's a opportunity, and I think every beginning of season there's opportunities, whether they pan out or not, or whether other people think they're going to. As a player, you're like, dude, I'm going to be an All Star this year. I might even get some MVP votes. I'm going to be a starting shortstop. I'm taking this because I'm a really good player. He didn't have any question about that, and I don't even know the kid. But to injure yourself and to have an injury like this, it's tough. Yeah, he's fast as shit, too. He is, he, I mean, he hasn't stolen a lot of bases, but he's an elite sprint speed guy. Like This, this might have played well for him. The bigger bases. How fast the, you are. If you can't steal a base, you ain't fast. Yeah, but also sometimes guys. I mean, Yadi Molina could steal bases, and he was slow as molasses. Yeah, but there's some guys, though, that grow into it, no? You think? I mean, if you're fast, you should be able to steal a base. I, I, had, tw- I had 20 stolen bases one year. I mean, watch out. <laughs> See, he wasn't fast, and he stole 20 bases one year. <laughs> Would you be all over that this year, Frazier, with uh, the new rules? Well, it just depends on where I'm at in my career. Um, if I'm late, in my crowd wasn't stealing any more bases. That was, that was the easiest thing. For no prime time. phrase, like 25, six year old Todd Frazier. Yeah. Is, he, oh, is yeah. he running 30 steals this year? I had a running rules. Joe Morgan taught me the running start from first base. And it, it just, it's one of those things you had Joe Morgan come in, teach everybody, and everybody sitting there like, ah, I love Joe, but I want to get, I, you know, spring training. I just want to get my stuff done with and go on. But it was one of those things where I took to heart and I, I asked him, I said, let's work on this. So him, Eric Davis and I, we, we got after a little bit, this running start. And you asked Anthony Rizzo because he, he was asking me questions too. And he's actually taken off with that too, as well, with a sneaky uh, running start. I said, why well, don't I take a chance? I wasn't the fastest guy. Every time I came out of my stance, it was something that, you know, didn't look good at all. So I had a running start. So I get two or three steps for the pitcher through and Lo and behold, I had 20 stolen bases one year, and uh, it was my best year yet in 2015. Tell him. Tell him what? What, what did he do? Who? Frazier. Oh, name drop, Frazier. Sorry. <laughs> oh, listen. Twice. I'm trying that's to be two. like you a little bit. I hey, did. That's, that's two. two. So I don't want to hear about name dropping because you just dropped Joe Morgan, Eric Davis, Anthony Rizzo, 20 stolen bases. That should count. I mean, you're naming your own <laughs> stats. I mean, come on. Hey, it's going to be all. a good battle this year, actually. Uh, Kratz, you think Frazier or AJ plays that game more? Oh, once once AJ gets his guard down, no. it's definitely going to be AJ <laughs> because he's going to be talking about we're going to have some hurricane issues in Florida. He's be like, yeah, my neighbor can't say who it is, ex president. You know, this guy. <laughs> we were out on the ninth hole. Blah blah blah. Well, no, this you know, I, I gave up golf. You know. To do this show. You gave up golf, period? You can't Well, golf? I mean, I haven't been able to play in like two weeks because you've been living at my house. So, I mean, I got to. You don't need to be here when I'm here rehearsing and all uh, that. You know. Wait, wait. He just said, Fraze, he gave up golf because he's going to be on from like 11 to 12 or 1. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey, Al, so you're coaching. That's, well, that's, that's part well, of it, too. In the morning, is hard because. Don't blame the damn show. No, but in the morning, we've been having rehearsals and doing some sure. stuff. But in the, but then in the future, the time, you can play You can play t- t- 6 to 10 or something like that. In the morning? Yeah, yeah, that's you clearly not don't go. <laughs> How long does it take? 
Well, it does. It, I mean, it takes a couple hours. Four but, hours. But no. you're not teeing off at six in the morning. The sun's not even up. <sighs> I don't golf. So what? You can't, what, you what's can't the tee off at least like eight. I mean, there was there was a fog advisory today. I saw that. Right? I was up early. I mean, I was supposed to be playing at Bay Hill. Name drop. <laughs> <laughs> today in the pro am but guess what i'm here instead <laughs> you're a true champ you know, i could have had like ricky fowler as my partner today walking around 18 mm. holes name drop but <laughs> instead i'm here well we appreciate you all right if you're uh with us hashtag ft live we'll take questions and all that um let us know please and uh i got a little game to play as we continue to get caught up on the off season also anticipating a little adam wayne right action um, he's on his soon. way he is he on his me. way yeah, he said okay. he's on his way. Give him a couple minutes. He's, he just got done working out, so he's on his way. Good, so he can interrupt our game because we want to try some things out. Some of these are going to be awesome, and some of them are going to suck, so you guys let us know. Um, but, yeah, Wainwright and then Ted Barrett, we're going to talk rules and all that um, with the former up. What would you do about the following players? Let's see. Uh, instead of general managers, this show features players, although also – I'm going to name drop Ken Rosenthal. Kenny Ballgame is going to be on with us multiple times a week. I think he's on with us either tomorrow or Friday. I'll figure that out. Um, but let's run this thing. I like it. I like it. I do. I think the people can hear, but I don't know if we heard it. No? I'm, uh, anything Star Wars, I'm all for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. We How is Darth Vader a general manager? Well, because they're trying to take all your money away, Kratz. Well, also you ever go to arbitration? Trust me, <laughs> sit across the table from them. They are Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was playing off the I am your I am your general manager. So let's do. I'm going to start with Brian Reynolds. Interesting story from the off season, requesting a trade, and then it looks like some reports out there. The Pirates offered six years, eighty million on an extension. Um, and he's said that he would stay in Pittsburgh if the club offers a fair deal for both sides. The main problem that I have is, I mean, you know, phrase the, the pirates are cheap. They're, they're, there's no secret. They're not going to be our best friends here, but um, they, they apparently in trade discussions would read from, from all our favorite insiders. Like they're throwing out massive, massive names as if like, you know, he's a top 10, top 20 player, like fine, however you value him. And he's a great player, right? He's probably top 30, at least maybe something like that. Top 30, top 40 player. All good. Cool. If you're treating him like a top 20, top, top 10 player, then you're offering him six years, 80 mil. I'm going to show him all the other extensions that have been handed out over the past few years to guys also that I haven't even played for nearly as long too. Like, and I'm not saying, you know, at the time when the value was high, a, a Tatis or, or a Wander Franco, but these are guys getting two threes in front with, with a couple figures after that, right? 200, 300 mil. Um, you're, you're offering six years, 80 to Brian Reynolds. I'm, I'm giving you the finger. No, that's a slap in the face. I mean, honestly, I, I wouldn't even pick up the phone anymore. I mean, I, Knowing the guy, he, he's an upstanding dude. He plays the game the right way. Switch hitter, good outfielder. Um, I, I want, I want out. If, if I'm him, I'm definitely wanting out of there. Going to a team that respects me, that 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 loves me for my game, and that's willing to pay me the money that you know he deserves, and he deserves a lot more than that. You know, triple the time if you want the truth. Um, but yeah, I mean, Pittsburgh's doing what they do best, thinking that they're going to get the world back for him. It's not going to happen. Um, you know, they either need to pay him what he deserves or, you know, let him go. And if I'm Brian, I'm waiting as long as I can uh, to get out of there. It's not a good situation. And, uh, you know, he deserves to be on a ball club that's a playoff contender and that's willing to dominate and show him some love, man, because right now they're not giving it to him. And here's my thing, Kratz. If I would say if a team's in a spot like that, you need to offer a player like that more. It is – according to many players I've covered over the years, debilitating to be on a terrible ball club every damn year. Like you should be paid for, for going through the suffering and having a good attitude about it. For sure. He doesn't owe, he doesn't owe the team anything. Maybe right. fans like feel like he might as a, as a player, but look, the ownership this past year was the first time they ever paid anybody $10 million. And it was to key Brian Hayes in the first year of his, whatever his deal is, a seven-year deal. Like, so the team is looking at saying, oh, well, we're offering more than we've ever paid, you know, any any of our guys ever. And really, 
I mean, are they re- is that really what they thought he was going to accept? And if he did accept it, were they going to keep him around? No, they don't. They don't want to pay anybody any more than they have to. Boom, they would have shipped him out the door if he signed that contract. So good for him for not signing it. He's their best player, isn't he? Uh, Probably. Yeah, yeah. I would say so. To yeah. get every dollar yeah. you can get. Yes. Right? Because the team, like Crouch just said, as soon as they get the chance, they'll be like, yep, see if we can get three prospects for you. And and you're on a club-friendly deal where they can say, well, we know what you're going to make. So, listen, if I'm yeah, – dude, get every dollar you can. I tell every player that. Fight for every single dollar and, and don't let anyone – Unless you're happy and there's a better in a situation where you just love it and you're, you know, Joe Musgrove. But other than that, if you can get every dollar you can, especially your first big deal, get it. He made a trade request too this offseason, which we actually don't see even, that often. Not in even, baseball. Even better, put the pressure on him, man. It's just, it's, I mean, people sit there, man, 80 million is a lot of money. It is. Don't get me wrong, but it's laughable considering how much money that these organizations have. AJ, you hit on it a little bit before. Every organization is billions of dollars. Like this is, this is a joke, man. Come on, this dude has put up numbers every year from both sides of the plate, and he sits there with a smile on his face. He meets and greets the fans. He does everything off the field they ask you to do, and he's on a team that doesn't win, man. It, it's very hard to go in and, and give a hundred percent day in and day out, and he's done it. And I, I don't care what profession you're in, if 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 you're not on a winning club, but you know or. If you're, you know, not winning or losing every time, it, it's going to be hard to uh, put that smile on your face. I've got a few more for you, um, Kratzy, before we get to Wainwright, the Adam Wainwright joining us live. So um, the Phillies, there's been some talk lately about, I mean, they spent a ton. I'm pumped for the Phillies this year and for Philly fans. I was at a good chunk of their games in the playoffs, including the World Series and covering the game every year. I mean, that scene was ridiculous too. I mean, we're, we're giving love to San Diego. Philly is on your feet, every pitch, screaming on a strike where if you're picking up a hot dog at the concessions, you're like, did, did Harper just homer? They're like, nah, that's uh, that's strike three or strike two, um, bottom two, you know, whatever, right? Or top two, like every freaking pitch, every strike, Every ground ball routine play, they were freaking out. So they spent big on Turner, made other big money moves, but some of their own that have been there and that have actually been through the losing. Reese Hoskins and Aaron Nola, especially Hoskins, though. I mean, he's he's a free agent after, what is it, this season? Yep. Yep. So what do you do there? I mean, easy to say, throw him the bag, too. But if you're you're Reese and you're looking around, are you like, hey, I, I love it, right? I'm all about winning. We're spending big. But... It's my turn. I had a pretty good postseason. Absolutely, he did. And and he's, you know, his his average isn't going to be there. There's going to be streaky times, whatever, as a player. But you did go through the losing times. And AJ hit on a little bit about how, uh, you know, you should pay somebody more for paying through the, playing through the losing times. And I think there's a super, super crazy correlation. Not saying the Phillies are going to win the World Series this year, but saying Pat Burrell and – Reese Hoskins, how those two guys are coming into their last year, 2008, Pat Burrell was kind of a guy going through the whole rebuild and everything. And, you know, maybe not necessarily known for his defense, but bang the ball around the ballpark. Reese bangs the ball around the ballpark. And, you know, there's no, there's no extension on the horizon. doesn't mean they can't come together in free agency, but, it, it, you, you just can't pay everybody at every position, I think, as the Phillies are trying to pay everybody. But I think there's an opportunity, maybe at first base, that they can, you know, that they can use, you know, one year stopgap type of first baseman. And I think that's how, or maybe even Harper might move to first base, or or Alec Bohm might move to first base. So this this could be the last hurrah for Reese, but he's going to get the bag too. It's not happening. Uh, it's not. <laughs> not going to be a Philly. I'm sorry. It's just not. I mean, they have too many guys. They can put Schwarber over at first base. You know, they have Rio Muto on a big contract. And then when it comes down to it, they're going to pay their pitcher. Most teams are going to want to pay their pitcher. You're saying they're going to pay Nola. Over Reese. Yeah. Yeah. If it comes down to they have to pick between the two, they'll take, at least if I'm the GM and we're playing GM, I'm taking Nola over Reese Hoskins. Reese Hoskins mm-hmm. is a nice player. He had big moments. He had the big bat spike, you know, like when he hit the big home run. But listen, if y'all, I'm a GM, I'm paying the pitcher. I'm not paying the 
the position player. I can find me another first baseman. I can't <laughs> find me an Aaron Nola off, off anywhere. He doesn't know this, guys, but someone's on the line now that's probably like, yeah, hell yeah, because oh, he's a pitcher. Can we bring him in? It's our first ever guest doing this live on foul territory. The great Adam Wainwright joining us. Wow, this looks tight. But behind the scenes crew putting it together. Wayno, what's going on? Did you hear what AJ just said? Uh, about pitchers? Yeah, he was like, he was like, screw the position players. He's like, I'm paying the pitchers first. Best athletes on the field, and AJ knows it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh man, yeah, I knew that was cut. First of all, are you where are you driving to? Are you like going to go through like a, a drive through for us and give us your order? No, I'm not. I'm not driving. I'm parked right now. I don't want to get in trouble or get anybody arrested. I'm uh, I'm on a date right now. I picked my son up from school, and then my wife is going in to do some like cryotherapy and stuff like that. Um, but uh, this is the day before I pitch, so I'm not doing any of that today. I'm just. Uh, this is our off day, too. That's why I, I committed to do this a few minutes earlier to AJ, and I totally forgot about it. So my bad. But um, it's our off day. We only get <laughs> I only get one of these this spring, so I'm enjoying it. Good for you. Uh, I I just want to know. Give me the state of Wayno right now, like pitching wise. I know you're going to be fine because you're with Team USA. You know, red and white and blue face paint. You know, you're going to flip that high school curveball up there. You know, strike out a bunch of guys. Like, give me the state of you going into your last year. Like, listen, you're one of the all-time Cardinal greats, and nobody gets to end the way that you're going to get to end. Like, this is my last year. But let's just say, like, give me the state of your mindset. Like, this is my last year. Am I going to enjoy everything? What are you going to do? Yeah, man, I am. Um, uh, and I love seeing these faces, these guys I hadn't seen in a while. Uh, but um, I am going to enjoy every moment. I mean, I, I one thing I really enjoy is the preparation for each start, uh, the the – as far as like breaking down hitters and game planning, I love that. Love that. Love that. Uh, I love competing, getting out there between the lines. I'll tell you this. My teammate asked me the other day what the hardest thing about being an older guy in the league is. And honestly, I can I can say that the hardest thing for me is the want to as far as like strength training and speed training and doing all these things that I don't really have a whole lot of in the first place, speed or strength. Um that's the hardest part. You know, for me, if it's just about competing, I want to go out there and, and beat anybody at any time. But when it's, uh, you know, do I want to push through that fourth set and the 15th rep? I'm like, eh, man, I want to because I want to be able to compete well. But other than that, no, I do not want to. I want to, I just like every other guy, I want to go in there and train my buys and my tries and my, you know, get jacked on the, on the bench presses. Um, I want to do that. But, uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm doing all these leg and hip exercises and mobility stuff because I want to be great still. And I only have to be great one more time, AJ, you know, so might as well enjoy that, too. 30 times a year, brother, 30 times a year, you got to go out there. You know, it's a rough life you pitchers have. <laughs> Just don't understand. You know, you, you guys, we, all, we always joked, Adam Dunn used to call you guys kickers, right? You guys are special teams <laughs> players, you starters, you know, you only play, especially now you don't hit, you only play, you know, a quarter of the game, fifth of the game. So you guys are, you guys are like kickers, but. You know, people don't know, you know, Adam, one thing about you, you you've got a record career and I, I want I'm just asking, I'm a, I'll probably won't be the first one, but I want to, I want to autograph copy when your record comes out. And I want you to say to my career ERA leader, AJ, not Yachty. <laughs> I love you. Wayno. <laughs> yeah, true? you got it, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to that too. That's, we're going to try to release the album uh, mid season this year. Um, see what happens, but I'm having fun with it. Just another thing for me to have fun. My wife always points out that I have way too many hobbies. You know, I definitely am a, uh, a, a jack of all trades. I definitely am probably not a master of any of them, but um, I have fun with whatever I'm doing. I try to have the most fun I can. And um, I'm playing with my daughter. You know, she likes playing guitar and singing, and we love getting together and playing. And, and writing songs is, is uh, something that um, – has come sort of natural to me. I, my, I'm sort of a romantic, so I've been writing letters for my wife for back going all the way back to high school. So, um, you know, I like writing poems and, and that side of it. That's my girly side, AJ, which is nothing wrong with it. <laughs> I'm um, jealous. I like, I, listen, I, my wife wishes I would write her letters, write her a love song every <laughs> once in a while. So I'm going to ask you, Adam, like, can you write me one? And I'm going to, I'm going to copy it in my sloppy handwriting. I'll just slide it under like under the door and say, oh, I wrote this for you last night, honey. Like, uh, enjoy. There might be a business, like, out of that. No? Yeah. 
Wayne, I'll yeah, I can actually here, what you bro. say that I got a good idea about that for you. I, I, I think I could write a pretty a song pretty quick for you, AJ. Because you know what? Here, here's what we all know about AJ. AJ is going to tell you what he thinks. Um, and he, at the bottom, at the end of the day, he really cares and wants people to be great. And um, he's going to tell you what he thinks because he wants you to improve and be better. And that's why he's going to be a great podcast host, too, is because he's going to tell you what he wants and what he thinks from the heart. And if you don't like it, he's he's okay with that. I really think AJ might be like thrive off that. Um, but that's a good, that's a very good trait to have. And AJ rocks that well. That's why he's good on the TV too. No doubt, no doubt. What's going on, Wayne? Oh, Todd Frazier, man. How are you? The Todd Father. What's going? on? I didn't down, see man? you down there because it says Stream Studio over your face right now. But I, <laughs> <laughs> that's, hey, it's probably better off. It's like that. No worries. Hey. Now I see you. Now so, I see you, man. I want, I want You're a legend. Little... The only guy that could ever throw a bat and hit a home run in the world. <laughs> I appreciate that. One up in AJ. That's perfect. That's a good start to the podcast. I appreciate it. Um, I want to talk a little about, about dad life as well. Like for me, when I retired, I, I, I got three kids. I was a big believer in now coaching and doing stuff like that and training them the right way. Like, is there something that you're looking forward to next year with the kids and, and family that, you know, you, you, you haven't really done in, in a long, long time. Like, I, I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff you got on your mind that you're ready to do. Yeah, I mean, the main thing is just to be present more, you know, just to be with them. Just to, I've been, they've, they've had to miss a lot of things for me. You know, for a while there, we had to, you know, they had to choose what sport they wanted to play because we were gone a lot. And, you know, this season wasn't when we were at home and this season was, you know, in St. Louis. So, um, we, we couldn't stay or we had to stay or there's a lot of different sacrifices that they had to make uh, to follow me around in my career. So the, the first thing I want to do is is say yes to a lot of different opportunities for them and just try to be there. You know, I definitely want to be a coach or an assistant coach. Probably I, I, I feel like the head coaches always get the, the, the brunt of the hours and the the the, the uh, rebuttals from the player from the players families. So. <laughs> assistant coaches don't get yelled at too much. That sounds like my jam. Um, but I definitely just want to be present. I want to make sure that, you know, they're not going to have any wants that, that they never got to do. There's things, they sports they want to play and, and activities they want to do they've never been able to because dad's always playing. I can't wait to do that. No doubt. No doubt, man. That's awesome. And Todd, you know what? Todd's always the guy. He's the exception to the rule where you go, you know, if you see the – you see the hitter's hip fly out and they start throwing that one hand at the ball, you know, they, they got no pop. But I swear it seemed like Todd's best and farthest home runs came when he had one hand on the bat, butt flying out into the other, you know, dugout. <laughs> you know, you think you got him fooled and then he hits one 12 rows up and he was perfect for Cincinnati. My gosh, perfect for Cincinnati. So thank, uh, you. thank you, man. Yeah, you, know, but, you know, you wait, can wait, throw wait. a slider to Todd down and away, and then he would swing and miss it by three feet. And you're thinking, okay, well, I'm just going to make him try to prove that he can hit that. I'm not going anywhere else. And then he, <laughs> he'd put the same swing on it, and somehow he'd still reach it, and he'd hit it for a homer. I just never understood that about you. Amazing stuff. Thank you, man. You're making me blush. I appreciate wait, that. Wayno, did he get you? Is he? Are you in his book? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. He got me one of those Cincinnati right field home runs, though. I don't count that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got I think I got him twice. I think I think I got you twice. Yeah, Cincinnati is 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 all absolutely been the Achilles heel for me in my career. I, I'd have a two ERA in my career if it wasn't for Cincinnati. I, I always tell <laughs> I'm gonna steal a Lance Berkman quote here because he was quoted years back saying if whenever they press the red button to to blow up Wrigley Field, he wanted to be the one to do it. Well, they've redone that place. That's pretty nice. I feel like the same way for Great American Ballpark, man. Just let me know. I'll be there. Whenever you blow it up, I'll be there. I love Cincinnati. I love you know some of the food spots, great golf courses. Love the people there. That that stadium is from the devil. Dude, Wayno, you're trying to get a Skyline Chili like endorsement deal right now. Like when you walk into the clubhouse and they, you know they got the the chili dogs in there pregame for everyone to get sick on before hey, you know. I take. I would take a Grader's ice cream endorsement over over that. That's the best in the world right now. <laughs> bueno. Bueno. Eric Kratz here. Your favorite Kratz. friend. What's up, buddy? 
I've talked a lot of smack to you about starting pitchers behind your back, at your back. You know, <laughs> your your ERA would be a two ERA too if it wasn't for the three guys on this show. We all absolutely raked you. So me being one for three. No, I, no, uh, uh-uh. <laughs> no, one for uh-uh. three. No, Wayno and I have had this conversation, and I'm like, all my hits are cutters in. Jam shots over the second baseman's head. We've had this conversation. So no, I, I mean, I might have yep. got hits, but raking is a long That's ways right. away from what I did. If, if if AJ faced me 10 at bats, he's got 10 broken bats. He's definitely got some hits, though. <laughs> how, many, how many knocks is all that I care about? But you are, a, you are a baseball. Like, you're so engaged. You're engaged with every program you're with, PAO, with your kids, with a lot of charities, Bible studies in the morning. You're engaged in baseball too. This is like a super quick question with probably a long answer. Are you a Hall of Famer? <laughs> yeah, you know me about being long winded, huh, Crassy? Um, <laughs> you know what? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know, if if this was based on the criteria that was in like when I was first came coming up, I would say not even you know not even close. Um, but the game is a different game now, and I just don't know how many more 200 game winners we're going to even have. You know, um, I don't know what that is. I know I've, I've done some cool stuff. I know I've still got to do some cooler stuff. But uh, you know, I don't have any Cy Youngs, which probably hurts my case. The problem with that was always it wasn't my fault. I pitched pretty good. It was always Clayton Kershaw's fault or Roy Halladay's fault. You know, those guys, those guys were just better. You know, they were they were just better than me and um, nothing, nothing wrong with that, man. I'm I've been second a few times and uh, second always to someone great. So um, I can appreciate greatness and I've pitched with a lot of guy, great guys. But, uh, you know, I don't know. As far as in my era, um, Kershaw, Scherzer, Verlander, Grinky, um, you know, those were kind of my my guys that always pushed me. Those were coming up with those those guys always wanting to one up you know one of them all the time um those are the guys that push me i think probably all four of those guys are are hall of famers um i don't know it might be a just miss it might be a just make i don't know it might be a veterans committee might be a no chance i have no idea we'll wait and see what's cool to me though is that uh, i'm in the i'm in the there's a chance i'm in the i'm in the conversation and i think the cool part of that for me is when i got to the end of 2018 i thought i was retiring if i had retired at the end of 2018 we're not even having this conversation you know i'm not even an interesting uh candidate so uh five years later after overcoming some pretty tough injuries i feel like that's a great accomplishment as it is and so i feel very blessed in that yes yes i don't know if you are either we'll probably discuss it another time but i guarantee you're a hall of fame person and a hall of fame dad because i've seen it I appreciate it, Kratz. Thank you, man. That's good stuff. Hey, I got to go back to 2010, Wayno. Um, since I was with the, since I, I wasn't with the team yet, I was still in AAA. But I got to go back to uh, the Yachty Phillips thing, man. I think the Cincinnati fans want to hear about this a little bit. I can see the smile on your face. <laughs> I, I, I want, I want to get in a little more detail about this to to, uh, to fully understand. I know Brandon came out with the quotes, you know calling uh, all Cardinals bitches, calling, you know, this and that. You know, I hate the Cardinals. Was that – was it bro- – you guys must have been talking about that for a couple of days be- leading up to that. And then you see – Yachty. tell me about how Yachty was feeling because I think he was ready right off Jump Street, man. Get, let's dive well, in. Well, yeah, because that second. that article came out the day before. Yes, okay. So yeah. um, he said that in the days prior – the day's previous paper. Now, he did get one thing right in his interview he said everything in st luck that's not right but what he did say that was was pappy's barbecue is delicious now that is delicious (laughs) um but the problem with that interview was uh you know brandon was a great player very tough to play against incredible second baseman gold glove second baseman very very tough out clutch hitter great player but he was just kind of uninformed about st louis and i think you know it's it's, I think one thing that you, that everyone can understand is is having hostility towards the guys you're competing against, especially against the really good teams that are you're really you're really grinding against the ones that are fighting with you to, for that playoff spot to see who goes from your division. I mean, if you like the other team you're competing against every day, 
we need to have a conversation on my team. You know, that's not right. You shouldn't like the other team you're 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 going to war against. But uh, that does that shouldn't have anything to do with the the city itself. I mean, anyone who's played in St. Louis knows that our city's fans don't suck. You know, our our fans are amazing. They they get baseball better than any place I've been. You know, I'm a little biased, but I do I do think they get baseball better than anywhere I've played. Uh, and I've played in them all, so I've seen it all. Um, I, I, we just didn't like the com- you know, the nerve it took to say that in a paper, and then to go and tap the shin the shin guard of the guy you know that is the most feisty player on the team. What do you expect to happen? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. of course, Yachty has neck tattoos. Of course, he's going to fight you <laughs> if you call him out. Listen, you know, but that that. That brawl itself was wild because there was so much going on. Uh, uh, you know, I was kind of in the middle of that for a while, and wherever the wave was taking you was where you were going to go. You couldn't, you couldn't control that at all. You were just going with it. You were going with the flow, uh, and it almost died down before it started. Um, it almost died down. Everything was kind of calming down, and then my old teammate Chris Carpenter comes flying in off the top ropes yelling at Dusty Baker, and then Scott Rowland sees his friend, Chris Carpenter, going crazy, and he tries to stop it. But when people see Scott going for Chris, they feel like it's they're going to go fight each other. And so it was all-out panic, you know, and you saw Cueto kick in and, and all things, and Chris gets up against the, the net. Unfortunately, somebody did get hurt bad from that. You know, Jason LaRue never played another baseball game from that brawl, but – um you know, that's intense. When you get out there, all I know all y'all have been in those brawls before. When you get into the middle of them, <laughs> that 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 scrum is a little stronger than you think. You know, you can't really control the action a whole lot. Yeah, and then and then you had Dusty Baker and LaRusa. They never they were like it was just they just <laughs> did not like each other. So that was uh, that was because those two were chirping in the begin with, and then you see Scott Rowland kind of black out there a little bit. It looked like he was going after his best friend there, but at the same time, you, you don't know what happens in a brawl. But for that one, that's that that's the hatred they had towards each other. And that that's when I came up with the Reds, it was like, you know what, we play the Cardinals, we you know, we want to kill them. We don't want anything to do with these guys. And, you know, one main thing, we gotta beat the Cardinals. And I think that kind of hurt us in the long run a little bit, but at the same time, it gave us something a little more to play about for sure. Yeah, and that's and I think that's why Dusty and Tony hated each other so much too when they were because they were always competing against each other. When Dusty was with the Cubs and Giants and and Reds, those were all you know the the teams that the Cardinals were fighting every day, you know. And uh, Tony Tony and Dusty had a history before that even. So um, I think it I think it goes back a long ways. And uh, you know when you look at it now, I know Tony and Dusty have have cordial conversations now and they can look back and laugh at some of the things that happened. But there was some funny stuff that happened. There was definitely some intense rivalries. Uh, Y'all's Reds team, man, that was a, you know, that was a tough team. One thing I I always, I always uh, encourage our guys with throughout the years, you know, as you, as you pass the torch to the younger players, I say, listen, since I've been a Cardinal, here's the way it's gone. When I first came up, it was Cardinals Cubs. Then it was Cardinals Reds. And then it was Cardinals Brewers. And then it was Cardinals Reds, and then it was Cardinals Pirates, and then it was Cardinals Brewers, and then it was Cardinals Red. Whatever it is, it's always been Cardinals and one other team in our division. We've always been one of those top two teams fighting, fighting, fighting. So I'm sure the whole division hates us just like y'all did. You know, Todd, it's a, that's a good thing. You know, that means you've been winning. And Wayne, I know you've been with one team um, your whole career, but you've got a new squad coming up here, and you made a nice announcement for it too. WBC action coming up. How pumped are you? And also, I'm wondering. I'm the the one non-player. Kratz can can make jokes, but he played the bigs for a long time. Fan perspective is like, you know, you're playing with the best of the best, especially this year's squad. Is there like a big group text? Are you talking to Trout and all these guys regularly now? Not yet, and I've never met Mike before. And I, that, I'll tell you, that's one of the. I mean, I want to wear the red, white, and blue, and I want to wear that gold medal more than anything. But the the other thing I'm really excited about is meeting these superstar players that I've never had a chance to bump shoulders with, and just figure out what makes them go, what makes them tick, what makes them be the superstar players that they actually are. Because everybody does something unique to make them big league players. Everybody does something unique in their preparation and their work and in their mindset. 
and I can't wait to have those conversations. Bueno, when now obviously your last year, everyone knows about your old man walks, right? So when you're in Jupiter <laughs> and you're in spring training, do you and Jenny, do you guys go like for like old man walks on the beach after you're like you're pitching tomorrow, right? So do you go on old man walk on the beach? You take Jenny and the kids and say, all right, this is my walk. And then, you know, whatever you maybe you run into some, some stuff along the beach to, to film because usually you film them or at least send pictures from it. And then last thing for me is the pitch clock. You got to love the pitch clock because you worked fast and you wouldn't change your motion. So like we you change your motion on the time. Will you, will, you, will you do something to mess with the hitters? Okay, so uh, first question was old man walks. Got it. Um, <laughs> the the uh, the thing I've been doing uh, this year so far is I've been going on old man bike rides uh, ah. after the day after I pitch, and and, um, and we live right by the beach too. So I've been uh, at night. I've been going out right as the sun's about to set. Been going out on the beach, taking my guitar. The girls go out, and my son goes out and play on the beach and have a good time. And then uh, I go out there, play a little music, and watch that sun start to set because, you know, it's some cool stuff scientifically. When you see the sun start to set, the natural melatonin in your body set off, and you sleep better when that happens. So I've been trying to sleep better in spring training. But living down here in Jupiter, pretty close to the beach during this time of year, this is one of our favorite times of year. We love, love, love being down here. Second part was pitch clock. Um the pitch clock for me is is not a tremendous deal. I will say I've I've pitched um, once with it. So far. It's a little quicker than I thought it was going to be. Not so much during the at bat because, like you said, I like to pitch. I like to work fast. the The quickness for me is between hitters and between innings because those are the times that I kind of like to, you know, <clears throat> reset a little bit, take the deep breaths, and get my mind focused in the right place and. Went out the other day for the first inning, no problem. Second inning, I go out, and you got to be done at 30 seconds with your warm ups um, before the start. The, in, the 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 inning starts, uh, or they can yell at you, or I don't know. Angel was giving people balls the other day, but I, I don't know if it's a ball. I can't remember the rule on that. But then no, I, you're right, Wayno. It is a ball. Breath. Yeah, so I kind of dig my 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 dig my, I did my big breaths. I walked around the mound, spit my gum out where I always spit it out. Where Kershaw hates it so much, where I do it. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I look up. I'm taking my second deep breath, and I look up, and it's four seconds. So I walked right up the mound and kind of almost crow hopped into my pitch and made my first pitch, strike one. And uh, I was thinking, okay, there it is. That just happened a little quicker than I want. So it's going to take a little bit of. Um, getting used to as far as between innings and and between batters for me. Uh, I do think there is an advantage to be had if you can find out, figure out how to use it to your advantage uh, against the hitter a little bit as far as, you know, if he steps out once, then I can play with that clock a little bit more after that. And, and then I can use that clock and wind it down sometimes all the way to one. And sometimes I can pitch it eight seconds. And, you know, it just does. Uh, I, I do think there's, going to be some gamesmanship there i look forward to it i'm probably going to get really good in that in september <laughs> so um, <laughs> hopefully hopefully i figured out faster than that but uh you know what i have I, I really look forward to is uh talking with some of our prospects who are using the pitch clock last year uh and and apparently we have a couple guys who really mastered that and how to use it to their advantage so i want to talk to our young guys man you never stop learning Bueno, we really appreciate you doing this, man. Um, good luck. Have a blast, WBC and all that. And also, you made some history with us today. We're on every damn day, live, all year long. This is AJ, Todd, Kratzy's first show. We had talked about you for a while. We need to get Bueno on to kick this thing off. So thank you. Am and I also, the first one? You, you are number one. So we'll always remember this because we got, we, got, we got a big guest list lined up over the next week, especially. I mean, we go week by week. So we're like, Bueno's yeah. kicking it off. So you... You got another one in the books for everyone. Um, so, Perfect, dude. So I like I like starting things off. Just send me half the proceeds, whatever you make. We got you. Yeah, rev share all day, baby. And also, thanks for pulling over and all of that and being safe because Pierzynski's got direct TV in his car instead of navigation. Fun fact, if you didn't know. Wow, I I believe that AJ's in the know of many things. He's got. <laughs> he's got, I feel like he's one of those guys that has an opinion on most things, but most of the time he's informed on them. And I, I just don't understand that because if it's not on the Disney channel for me, I really don't know what's going on in the world. <laughs> <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> he's sitting in Orlando traffic driving to games, and that's where he's getting his info. So, Wayno, we appreciate it on the off day, man. Thank you so much for joining us, making a little history with us on on foul territory and FT Live. And we'll see uh, we'll see you in Jupiter probably. You going to a game or something? I'll probably yeah. sneak down there. Maybe yeah. we, maybe him and I can golf if we can get away. <laughs> there you go. I need I need some strokes. Oh come on! Oh no no. no. Best athletes at pitchers. Thanks, Wayno. I love you. You're the man. All right, Thanks, see you, buddy. Okay, talk to y'all later. See you, bub. We did it. Dude, he's the best. That was awesome. Fraze, Fraze. Fraze bring it up. Oh, come on. Yeah, Fraze. Well, I hey, I got, I got to know, man. That, that, was, that, that stuff is interesting, dude. I got to know about it. I wanted to see the field, man. Yachty was ready. I just, need, I just needed a little reassurance there because that was, that was a big – that kind of got the whole rivalry going a little bit more, man. That was as, intense. As Wayno said, he has neck tattoos, dude. Don't mess with the guy with the neck tattoos, especially no. back when – Back kind of when neck tattoos weren't like the thing they are now. Like he was kind of the first one. I don't know if I'm Brandon Phillips. I'm picking Yachty, and I played with Yachty and Wayno. I definitely wouldn't pick Yachty after playing with him. He's 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 ready from the jump. All, Can, all, all respect to Yachty, bro. He signed he signed his chest protector, his shin guards with the Michael Jordan insignia on there for me. This this second to last year, I retired. Nothing but respect for the big man, dude. It's hanging downstairs. I have to show you guys one day. Frage, we'll get into it deeper at some point. I mean, we got plenty of time with you over the year, but um, just for the kids that weren't paying attention in 2010, can you give me like your 30-second summary of, of what went down there before I bring in our former ump, Ted Barrett? Yeah, I mean, basically, Brandon Phillips stirred the pot, man, calling, calling the team Cardinals bitches, and he couldn't stand anything about St. Louis. The fans would always give it to him. Brandon Phillips led off the game. He always gives a tap to the shin guards to the catcher, which AJ, I'm sure, loves <laughs> when people do that. Mm, I and hated it. I hated it. I know. Well, yeah, I, I could tell. And Yachty said, and Yachty basically kicked the bat when he touched him. The bat was still in his hand, went flying. Next thing you know, you're going to talk shit. I'm talking shit. And they're in each other's faces. And next thing you know, Tony LaRusso, Dusty Baker start chirping to each other. And then Carpenter came in, started screaming at baker and next thing you know all melee it took went hey, off phrase phrase or cross answer me this if when you were playing right you wouldn't go to third base phrase just playing third base and kick him in the shin and be like hey how's it going right like why do guys walk up and tap you with their bat like i don't want you hitting me with your bat i'm not going over to i'm not going up to the first base but i get on first and whacking him in the shin and be like hey what's up buddy no well you gotta you gotta hit him you gotta hit him the only place that they have protection so we'd be walking up to the first baseman and tapping him in the cup like that's not happening like just because i got a shin guard on doesn't mean you gotta touch it yeah i could say i've never done that so on the good same page yeah there'd be a lot more brawls let's bring in former ump who started in 1994 on the al staff and just retired following the 2022 season ted barrett is joining us and and we're thrilled to have him and actually a great way to kick things off too is is talking about the ump role in brawls but ted great to have you thanks for joining us on the debut show we're excited to get into things with you and and uh do you have a brawl story for us did you break up any big brawls in life that that really stand out to you well, yeah, we had a lot of brawls, and I, I always kind of enjoyed them. I, I like getting in the mix a little bit and pushing and shoving, and uh, didn't like writing reports after. Had to go through and figure out who was throwing punches and who was doing what. I was just kind of enjoying it. I should have paid more attention because when it came time to write a report, I didn't know who who did what. Well, Teddy used to spar with like Mike Tyson, right? And you got now you got the goatee. I mean, look at you're looking. I mean, you're enjoying this retired life, but I mean, if, yeah, you enjoy brawls. You were sparring with the Vander Holyfield and George Foreman. I mean, you used to take your tooth out when, you you know, I'd come up to say hi to you and you take your tooth out and be like, I'm ready. And I'm like, oh, no, here we go. Another game. But yeah, I mean, of course you enjoyed it. Yeah, I got my blood flowing a little bit. You know, it's uh, a lot of little excitement to the ballpark. And uh, no, it was I like nice, smooth games. I didn't like when uh, things got chippy and people started. Uh, but I did. I did enjoy sometimes because, you know, you got big, strong baseball players like you guys and. When I never saw an actual punch during these brawls. Everybody kind of just grabbed and pushed and moved people around, and there wasn't a whole lot of punching going on. But I wasn't there for the the brawl you're talking about. But I know there was some genuine animosity going on there. That was that was a real deal one. That wasn't that wasn't just. Uh, it always cracked me up though when the bullpens jogged in and um, you know, they met in the field. It's like you guys want to fight? Why don't you just meet out in the outfield and go at it? Uh, hey, Dusty Baker always told me, Ted, he said, why don't we do it like hockey? 
and you know have the teams kind of separate each other and then all then just square up one on one and then when you fall down you yourself can you know pick me up most likely and say you know hey man that was a dumb decision but <laughs> on the on the other hand I'm talking about ejections um you know I've been ejected two or three times in my career and most likely all of them were deservingly so but is there like a is there like a, an ejection you could think about where you, you left after throwing a guy out where he's like oh my god like the conversation you had was just hysterical uh, you know is there something you could think of a manager said something funny you know what I mean yeah I think first of all I want to I was watching earlier and and I'm with AJ what's going on in your life that you're getting ejected from from little league games I mean come on man I think we need to talk about that a little bit it's, it's when you say you're you're backing up little Johnny you know showing you got his back but you buy him an ice cream or something. You don't have to go out and yell at him. We got an umpire shortage going on. I got Todd Fraser coming at me. I don't think I'm showing up for the next game. Come no, on, man. no, that's on me. I'm going to work on that. I got you. I'm my bad. All right, appreciate I that. But yeah, some of the some of the uh, you know the the ejections were happening. I remember one with Terry Collins when he was with the Angels. I was a young umpire. He's coming out. He's yelling and screaming at me. Of course, the crowd thinks he's really giving it to me, but he's just kind of complaining. He's saying, "Hey, I." My pitchers can't get anybody out. My bullpen can't save a game. My my hitters can't get on base. I, you got to run me. I can't watch this anymore. And he throws his hat down, and I run him, and then I, I almost start laughing. He gets up in my face. He said, don't laugh. Don't laugh. If you do, they don't, they don't know what I'm doing, so just go with this. And I was like, wow, that was – that was." I almost turned into a counselor there. You know, he started complaining about his pitching staff and, and uh, what was going on in his life, so – um, yeah, another time Joe Madden uh, came out to the mound. He was with Tampa, and he was mad over a, a check swing we didn't call. And, and I said, hey, that's enough, Joe. Let's let's move on. And and uh, he started again. I said, hey, not another word. And he said, I love you, man. Boom, dumped him. So <laughs> threw a guy out for saying I love you. That, was, that wasn't right on my part. I should have maybe threw another warning in there. But uh, we used to have fun with that. <laughs> Actually, AJ, you were just saying to Wayno that you need some uh... – some love letter poetry advice. Yeah, Wayno writes love letters to his wife. I'm like, can you send me one over for my wife? And I, I'll no. just sign it at the bottom and act <laughs> like I wrote it and be, be much better off. Don't say I love you to Ted Barry. Yeah, That's right out of the I, damn game. I didn't mess with Teddy. He's one of the few umpires that was bigger than me, so I don't want to mess with him. <laughs> we always had a good relationship. You know, he, Teddy, when I first had you, you had Tim McClellan. It was like you two were always kind of at the hip, right? I mean. You got yeah. Tim McClellan, who was like six foot ten, and then you had Ted Barrett, the boxer. You're like, I ain't messing with these guys. <laughs> But you were not, you were not, yeah, you were not on the George Brett game, right? Because Tim McClellan was the home plate umpire for the. You weren't up yet, right? Or were you there? No, no, I wasn't up for the George Brett, but I was with Tim when we had the Sammy Sosa cork bat incident. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. That was, uh, I think, two thousand and and uh, three, maybe four, maybe three, I think. Yeah. That, so Tim, it's like uh, the the cork bats and the pine tar bats. They followed him everywhere. But yeah, I got to work with him. And, and you remember AJ. Uh, and, and I loved working behind AJ because he always had fun. He had a good time. And Kratzy, he was awesome to work behind. And um, Even though he's a big guy, he'd get both of those guys. They'd get down low and give you a good look. And we'd always have good conversations. And, um, you know, that's the thing I don't think a lot of guys realize is the conversations that go on between umpires and catchers. It's it's fun stuff. I mean, and you're not talking too much about baseball. I mean, we're talking boxing. We're talking about life. We're talking about family. Um, I mean, you're standing right behind a guy for – you know, it used to be three hours. You might as well get along with them and at least uh, find some common ground. Hey, well, I did the most. <laughs> What's that? Say it again, Kratzy. Who farted the most? Oh, my God. oh, man. I think it was me. I had to apologize a couple times. <laughs> I, I think I think AJ uh, one time went out to uh, went out to the pitcher's mound before they had the five pitcher rule and and uh, came back. I said, what was that all about? He said, oh, I just wanted to. You know, I didn't want to crop dust you, so I went out there and talked to the pitcher no, for a minute. I think so. I, I'll, we'll get into that, so we don't have enough time for that. That was, in, I think it was in Wrigley. It was in Wrigley Field. And one day we'll get into that, and I'll tell the real story. That wasn't, that was kind of what I told you, but what I told my pitcher was like, if you don't get a double play on this pitch, it was John Danks. Mm -hmm. I am going to go on home plate. <laughs> Not number one. <laughs> and the next pitch, he got a double play. <laughs> and, I ran, and then I had to run the 17 miles up the steps at Wrigley Field. Wow. That is I'm a so true glad story. You got the double play, man. Oh, me too. Poor Teddy would have had to, He would have had to call for a hazmat suit. It was a. Oh. It was bad. 
Ted. One day we'll get into that whole story. We don't got. We got Ted. On, I don't want to get into that right now. Uh, yeah. That's Ted, good. We talk about accountability all the time in baseball and umpiring. I, I think it's a big thing. I wish I want people to really understand. Basically, you know, say you miss a pitch. You know, it, it happens. I, I miss pitches as a player, as a hitter. But is there, you know, that accountability where you were one of the true umpires that basically say, "Hey, man, I missed that." Like. That's something you took to heart, and I know that's definitely for sure in most of the umpires out there. Is there something that you would say or, you know, would you go back and look on the film? Because I, I think really fans need to really understand how much you guys put into your job and, and into your work for sure. I think this is part of what relationships that we were talking about. You know, if there's a guy that I trusted, um, maybe, you know, Kratzy's back there and, and uh, hey, Ted, I thought that was a pretty good pitch. You know, um, I would – if I trust Kras to say, hey, you, yeah, you might be right. I need to take a better look at that. Um, some guys, you, you say that, and then they're going to run and tell the whole dugout what you're talking about in your conversation. And that, that kind of leads to some chaos. But um, you, fans have to remember that they're watching the game on TV and players are running down the tunnel and looking at the replay with their video technology. And a lot of times we're the only ones who know that, that if we're getting a pitch right or wrong. We don't know until after the game when we can take a look at it. So, um I would ask a catcher, especially in spring training, man, because there's no way to practice uh, 98 mile an hour heaters coming to you on the black. So you gotta, you know, I would ask a veteran catcher, like, hey, am I going too far? Am I on the corner? You know, and, and if it's a guy I trusted, um, he'd give me some feedback. Uh, and then during the season, I definitely would go back after. I and I think I want people to know how much umpires care about getting stuff right. And we go back and dissect our games and, and with the technology that we get, our grading system. If I had a strike three on a player and he's, you know, he's upset about it, I will definitely go back and look at it. And then the next day I'll come to him and I'll tell him, hey, on our system, uh, yeah, I had it off, off the plate. Uh, I went too far. Sorry about that. Um, or I'd tell him, yeah, I looked at it and on our system it was a strike. So, um, and guys always appreciated that. But I think when, when you have trust and a relationship with somebody, you can be a little more open about it. What you can't do is just uh, admit, um, you know, if you're admitting 20 times a game that you made a mistake, eventually the player is going to go, all right, we'll quit apologizing and figure it out. So uh, we definitely, we care about getting the calls right. Uh, I mean, we lay in bed and, and, and everything runs through our mind after a game. It's like, man, I missed that pitch and I got to figure out a way to get it right. So, um, I don't want people to think that we have no accountability. A lot of people think, oh, they just do the games, go home, they don't care. We definitely care, and we're accountable for every call that we make. Uh, Teddy, I know you guys care a lot about all the changes going on with the game, too. What do you think? But then also, like, what are your friends? Obviously, these guys, you've, you've been around for, for years. What are they saying? We can go line by line, but first, overall, on pitch clock, you get the shift restrictions. Got bigger bases, which I feel like, I mean, if you're not in for bigger bases, like not as controversial as the rest. Um, you know, extra innings now we're locking in runner on second in extras. It, give, give me your take. You know, you're retired now. Go for it. Yeah. Well, you know, the first thing that, that you think about when new rules come into play is uh, this is going to be a heck of a lot more work for the umpire. And, um, you know, for me, I never like change too much because I liked uh, – you know, things to go along smoothly and not have new wrinkles. But, you know, it's funny, whenever a change comes in, um, right away I didn't like it. Uh, but, for example, you know, expanding uh, more wild card games. I'm like, oh, that's going to – but it ends up being good, right? Um, other changes come along and it ends up working out. So, you know, my hope is all this works out for the advantage. Um, we love quicker games, right? All of us love that. And uh, his umpire is going to get paid by the hour. So, yeah, we want a nice, <laughs> clean, quick game. Nothing like a nice two-and-a-half-hour ball game and then uh, go to dinner and do your thing. But, um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of work for the guys. And the only way to do this right is for them to start this in spring training. So I'm so happy that they started game one. If there's a violation. We're going to get it because you got to set the tone. You've got to make sure everybody's on the same page. So when we get to opening day – Hopefully some of the bugs have been worked out. And, man, it's pretty intense just from talking to the guys. They say it's really – it's like a cardio workout, someone said. It's like a sprint. So, you you know, baseball working was – especially the bases, always kind of leisurely. You know, I'm talking to Frazier over there at third base. We're having a good time between pitches and laughing and cutting up. They said there's no more of that. 
you got to get locked in and here we go. I heard Wayno talk about, um, you know, getting on the mound and pitching and not taking a deep breath even, just, just getting and going. And so I'm going to like watching the pace of the game and, and uh, having quicker games, but it's going to be more work for the umpires. They're going to have to do uh, – they can't relax. Um, I was thinking about this. You know, you're talking about uh, Phillips coming up, tapping shin guards, saying hello, you know, me being behind AJ or Kratzy, and we're talking. And I think sometimes I was part of the problem because I was talking to the catcher or the hitter as they came up. And <laughs> there's going to be no more of that. I think so, like player and umpire relationships, I think they're going to be strained because there's not going to be a whole lot of conversation going on. T Teddy, we, you're. You, you were one of the best at having feel, like you're talking about. Like, there's got to be a feel, though, right? For an umpire, like the game that ended in a tie. I know umpires are going to push it hard. It was kind of like stay in the box. I was pushed really hard, or the wh whatever the new rule, the Bach rule. Remember Bach and Bob Davidson, where he was calling box on every single guy every day. Like, there's got to be a feel, though. Like, if you're in the ninth inning, it's a huge situation. The closer's in, one run, run, run game. You know, the three hole hitters up with the bases loaded, the guy needs to take a deep breath. They're not going to call it, are they? Or is it just going to be strictly by the rules? I think right now in spring training, it's going to be strictly by the rules. And, and then as guys get a feel for it, because this is a learning curve for the umpires, too. You know, we hadn't done this before. Um, the guys are going to have to figure at this out. So I think the strategy right now is let's call this as close as we can, as strictly as we can in spring training. And then as we develop a feel for this, the guys can, can start to um, have some latitude on where they need to uh, maybe uh, give some people some leeway. Um, but if you start it out like this and you're really strict, I think then, then we can go the other way. But, you know, the problem is, like, AJ, when you played and they talked about staying in the box and get, making sure as soon as the song's over, you get up and get in the box, there was no penalty. And that's it. Uh -oh. Ejected. He's out. Well, here's my thing, and we'll get him back in a second. I mean, this is going to happen all the time. This is. Uh, He's great. They I don't have. He is great. The he best. doesn't have the Wi-Fi like like we do. But you know, Frazier's using up half of his jersey. Oh, sure. uh, <laughs> electric there with the neons. Hey, hey, he's back. All right, Teddy, keep going. Yeah. So, um, man, I lost lost my train of thought. But uh, oh, so yeah, we're going to call it strictly now, and then hopefully things loosen up during the season as. Um, they get a feel for it, and and um, uh, yeah, I think I think that's what we were talking about. Yeah, hey Teddy, what's your favorite umpires room? Because if for people out there that have never been, if you haven't been in an umpire's locker room, they've got every snack, every drink, every piece of candy, everything. So, what was your favorite locker room? Don't, and if you say Texas and Hoggy, you're, we're going to black you out again. <laughs> well, that's immediately what came to my mind: Texas and Hoggy, and but. Uh, you know, and then the Houston, you've got – Texas has got great barbecue, man. The brisket's unbelievable. So, I mean, so many good rooms. So many good rooms. But, um, you know, I think it was San Francisco, when they built the ballpark, they forgot to put an umpire locker room in. I think they call it the after the afterthought room. Um, so we got this little closet there. Little, uh, So you got a, a, a nice, beautiful stadium with a little closet. But some of the rooms are huge. D.C., when they made the new one, they did it right. You know, the – like AJ said, man, it's like you look at us. That's why we're not, um, you know, exactly on the cover of Muscle magazines because we're in there eating candy and everything you want. Uh, but no, the, the food's gotten better and we're eating healthier now. And um, yeah, all the locker rooms are. We've got great locker room attendance. Um, you know, this is what I'm going to miss. My wife, I, you know, she's she's not going to uh, have my laundry hung up and my dry cleaning and. Um, have a meal for me before, during, and after the game. So um, I'll miss that part of it. And, you know, you walk into the locker room, we're probably playing spades. That's how we got ready for the games. And I'm going to miss that, sitting around, playing some cards and busting chops. I was one of the worst spade players, but I had a lot of fun. Love Teddy, it. real question for you. AJ was talking about big spots with the pitch clock. When you're in a perfect game, let's say you're in a perfect game with a pitch clock, when are you noticing that you're in a perfect game? Because you've been part of a few of them. Yeah, you know, it's funny. With uh, 1999, I got to work David Cohn's perfect game. And um, I looked up in about the seventh or eighth inning, and I saw he hadn't given up a hit. 
but I'm trying to remember, was there a walk? Was there a double play? Was there a pickoff? And, um, you know, I honestly couldn't remember. You get so locked in, as you guys know, people probably are like, how do, how do you not know? But you're locked in just trying to get every pitch right. And so when I walked off the field, Chuck Merriweather, as AJ, uh, I was with him and Tim, he, he added to the height of our NBA crew there. He was about six, seven. Um, I said, Chuck, was that, a, was that a perfect game? He said, yeah, it was. Um, now I'll go to 2012. I'm behind the plate for Matt Cain's game. I think after the third inning, I saw he had a perfect game. Um, and from there on out, I, I knew every batter that uh, he had a perfect game going. Um, I was over third base for Philip Humber's game. And uh, so, yeah, to, to be on the field for three perfect games was crazy. I mean, it's like I, I caught lightning in a bottle three times. Yeah, that's, well, the mask in front of me is from Philip Humber's perfect game. Probably the most unbelievable perfect game from someone that really pitched. I mean, I love Phil, but he threw one game in his life. And Rungi, I still love you, Brian Rungi, wherever you are. Thank you for calling that check swing on Brendan Ryan. Uh, <laughs> that's this? Yeah, that's the Philip Humber. It's hard to see, but you can just see it in the front of me. That's the they, the White Sox bronze the mask for me from that in Seattle. And, uh, yeah, I forgot you were on that crew, Teddy. Yeah, and then so you were third base, and uh, yeah, it was that was that was uh, the easiest perfect game I've ever seen. Like there was like not even a ball hit remotely hard. It was like weak fly ball, ground ball, strikeout. There was nothing like no play where you're like, oh, Matt Cain had the one where the guy made the diving catch, right? There was nothing. It was yeah, like just yeah. he just cruised through 27 outs. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. And you know, uh, Marvin Hudson was over at first base, and you know, Brian called the check swing, but uh, if he'd have went for Marvin for help, Marvin would have called it. He said after the game, he said, yeah, I was I was calling that uh, if you didn't. So um, I know the guys were uh, over in Seattle were upset that that uh, he called that check swing. But, um, yeah. man, to be on the field for that, huh, AJ, was that – I mean, is that one of the most surreal things well, to catch a perfect game, man? Well, no, think – so, Teddy, Burley, I was – you've been for three. I've seen two. And Burley threw his uh, in – Chicago and I wasn't catching so Burley was making fun of me that I wasn't catching so I got to watch it from the bench and then to get to the, you know two years later or whatever it was to get to see one the first text was from Burley saying congratulations you got your perfect game not but see like, one you caught one yeah, yeah 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 but but I mean I got to see yeah. one and then I got to catch right, one. right but like yeah the, but the umpires are a huge part of it and and that day Rungi you know love them god bless them uh, I called that check swing because I clanked the ball and I had to go chase it. So thank God Brandon Ryan argued because otherwise I would have gone down in infamy as like costing Philip Humber his, his moment in glory. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, with uh, Burley, Eric Cooper worked the plate in his perfect game. And you're talking about, yeah, your center fielder made an unbelievable catch in that game. Yeah. And um, so Coop was behind the plate, but then Eric Cooper was also behind the plate when Burley threw a new hit, uh, no hitter. So, you know, we lost Eric Cooper a few years ago. He was a great yeah. umpire. But I was like, hey, what do you and Burley got going on? I mean, <laughs> well, they had the same game, number. No hitters. Same number. That's right. It was 56, right? Yeah. So if you look at the – what's amazing, you look at those two games, is Cooper was behind the plate. They're both 56. The time of game was exactly the same. Both games he faced 27 hitters because he walked Sammy Sosa, picked him off before he threw another pitch. Like, everything was, like, exactly the same with Eric Cooper behind the plate. Uh, that, that's crazy, and you know, with, with Burley, he'd have had no problem with these uh, these these pitch timing regulations. I mean, he'd have been he'd have been well under the clock. He, he didn't have to. This would not have been a change that he would have sweated at all. I think he might have created this. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> right, Teddy? Why why does it seem like in these perfect games as a hitter, man, the, the zone just gets bigger and bigger if you're behind the plate? Uh. I always get I always get so confused why that happens from like the fifth inning on. I'm just curious. Well, you know, you don't you don't want to be the guy that calls uh, ball four on a pitch that's a quarter inch outside and costs the guy a perfect game. Come on, I mean, if there's if there's doubt in your mind, I think I think you're going to give the benefit of the doubt to the pitcher, right? I mean, yeah. Um, and you know, this is something that if we end up getting an auto, an ABS system that calls balls and strikes, and we're just getting it in the earpiece, I don't know, man. It's like um, we got a perfect game going here. Let's let's uh, that that pitch might be one eighth of an inch outside, but to me, we got to give that to the pitcher. I'm retired now. I can say that. Hey, bringing, Teddy, him, bringing him up, baby. I know. Yeah, Teddy, I've been a part of it. Teddy, don't ask Ron Culpa. He threw me out when you Darvish was throwing a perfect game for not calling one. So trust me, Ron Culpa didn't give a flying. <laughs> you know what about that perfect game? Because he ejected me for arguing. Man, it, you know, Ronnie's just trying to get it right, right? You know, they asked uh, yeah. Bruce Fremming. I think I think it was Milt Pappas or someone back in the the old days, and in, in 
Fremen balled a, a three two pitch and they said to him, Man, Bruce, you could have been the seventh guy to call a perfect game behind the plate. And he said, Name one of the other six. <laughs> I mean, so uh, you know, True. Bruce Bruce didn't care, but Hey, Ted, before you bounce, just on the ABS, which is, you know, automatic balls and strikes for, for fans. Yeah, AJ's putting his thumb, thumb down. What are your thoughts? And I, I know they've also messed around with, yeah, so you get you get ball or strike in your ear and you, you call it, but also they've messed around with, hey, do you have some challenges that you throw out there, you know, say three a game where you can say, nah, I don't like that one. Um, let's get the ABS system to check it, which – I mean, I like everything to be right because I'm like, there's so much money on the line for for a lot of people, um, even yeah. people that aren't playing nowadays. But, mm -hmm. you know, and if there's such a bad call, um, you, you do want that to get fixed. Always like ingrained in my head was before we had instant replay review was I think it was Helton at first. I mean, there's been a lot of plays and he was faking because he was so he was like three feet off the bag and he faked that he caught it. And, and the ump called called him out, um, whoever was running to first base. So anyway, I just visualized this. I mean calling enough games in my life sometimes there there are some bad calls guys guys miss badly so i do like the system aj i mean you like that you don't even like that part like being able to challenge if it's a really I bad the, call. i hate the robot balls and strikes teddy i want to i want the i want the relationship i want the the guy like you said perfect game know the situation have some feel what like. if it, what if he's what if he fucks up and it costs you the world series whatever no, dude, you're chin up. I mean, I'm gonna argue, but I'm keeping my chin yeah, up. You're going number two on the plate. <laughs> the human element, man. I love the human element about it. That we could talk to Teddy. And I see Te every time I saw Teddy, I give him one of these, and he give it to me back. You know, I, that's that was our hello. Like people don't yep. people don't see that at all. And he give me the head nod, like let's go. You know, we we battle each other. That's the human element of baseball that we still need and love. And these umpires are working their tails off, you know, in minivans, driving 14 hours in the minor leagues to get to a ballpark. I mean, that's what people need to understand. It's a job, man, and it's tough. So I was hard on the umpires. Don't get me wrong. I loved them all. But, you know, talking to Teddy, this is this is real life. This is the human element, and we love every second about it. Yeah, you know, guys, one thing about the replay when it came in on the bases, once again, I was like, I'm a baseball purist. So I'm like, I didn't want this. But it ended up being a good thing because – you got Jimmy Joyce, one of the great guys. You guys know that. One of the great all-time umpires, and he's known as costing Armando Galarraga a perfect game on the last at-bat. Calls the guy safe when he was out. If we had replay there, we could have fixed it. Um, but now we've got – he's it's the Jimmy Joyce play. Uh, you go back to the 85 World Series, Don Denkinger, Royals-Cardinals. It's the, the Don Denkinger play. You know, our goal as umpires is to not have a play named after us. <laughs> and uh, at least now, the, you know, the guys go out in the World Series, and if they have a mistake, which happens, it can get fixed on the bases. Behind the plate, though, this is a little bit different. Um, to me, it's like if you want to use the, the ABS uh, and you get it to where it's calling better than we are and you want to use it, I'm kind of an all-or-nothing guy. If you want to do that, go ahead and do it. But I don't like the challenge where we use it sometimes because, you know, they've got their zone. The umpire behind the plate's got his zone. And, it, it, you know, you're trying to get it synced up, but – yeah, I'm like I'm like AJ with you know I find myself agreeing with AJ on a lot of stuff. This is pretty cool. This is a whole different thing. But um, <laughs> hey, you never got yeah. me. You never ran me. You never. Ran I didn't. Me. No, I, I, seriously, I love being behind. You know, here, and here's the thing. Now I'm going to get on a soapbox. But here's what I loved about AJ. I knew when I got behind him, we were going to have fun. And he might be a pain, or you know, he might do something. But he was going to have a good time. I didn't like going out on the field and have everybody just grinding like crazy. Even even uh, Todd, as he'd argue once in a while, he's laughing, he's joking, he's saying something. Um, Kratzy was always, you know, we're always uh, encouraging each other and lifting each other up. But, man, the guys that they're just out there grinding, I'm like, man, you're playing a game, you're making a lot of money. I get it. I get the pressure. I know the guy that signs a, a multi-million dollar deal. He wants to produce. He wants to make people believe that he's worth it. Uh, what he's doing. He wants to win for his team, but man, guys got to have fun and you guys had fun. And that's why it's so cool to come on and talk to you. No, we appreciate it. Well, we definitely want to have you on again. So this was awesome. And I want to finish with this because we know you're, you're super involved and I, I'm imagining maybe more so than ever now that you're retired and, and not running around to different ballparks all summer long. Uh, Ump cares. You've been a part of that for a long time. So is there anything we should know about um, or keep an eye on for, for the summer or where we can go. I know that you've been involved with, with that charity for a long time, right? 
yeah, Hump Scare is a great charity, man. We do a lot of things, especially for kids. Um, we got some college scholarships going now for for, for kids that were um, came up through adoption and um, hospital visits. Uh, one of the worst things was COVID wiped that out for a little bit. We're back going into the hospitals. Umpscare.com, you can check it out. We have a golf tournament. Come on out and play with us in uh, January. We just had our, our most recent one. And um, also, we do some cool auction stuff. Um, keep an eye on MLB.com will advertise for us. But if you go to Umpscare.com, you'll see some cool auction stuff. Also, I'm working with a group called Freedom Dressed. It's a wounded warrior project um, down there, Tampa, down your neck of the woods, AJ. I can talk more about that next time. But, um, you know, got to support our guys that uh, went out and fought for us and, and are back home now getting getting back into society. So, man, I, I love coming on and talking with you guys. I'd love to do it again if you'd have me. And, um, man, let's, let's have a great 2023 season. Hell yeah. Thanks for joining, joining the maiden voyage here. Debut show, Ted. It was really fun. Appreciate it. And uh, have, enjoy the rest of the day, and we'll bring you on again soon. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. And, uh, man, Wayno's number one. I could live with that. Me being number two, this is, this is awesome. This is, going, this is going to my Wikipedia page. <laughs> Hell, yeah. It's, th this is going to be somewhat of the order. It's like hey. Wayno one, Ted Barrett two. I think we got, like, Correa, Corbin Burns, Max Scherzer, Andre Jimenez. So good to have you in the mix with those guys. Not bad. That's that's a uh, high company right there, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ted. Great having you. We'll talk soon. All right. See you guys. See Thanks, you. Ted. Appreciate you, Teddy. Nice. Hey, he, he mentioned Wikipedia page. Umpires, man, getting in trouble on those Wikipedia pages. Yeah, you saw, you saw uh, that. <laughs> you saw that. You saw that. That Joe West action. Yeah, he I, dropped I, it. He dropped it in. I think there's something behind that. I got to be honest with you. I, I I enjoyed him bringing that up. I I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I imagine it, you could Google it, or maybe we'll talk about it tomorrow when we get more more juice on on the story. But it, it was like a battle that Joe West was having with some. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, I can imagine like Joe West at his oh. tablet being like, he lives here. Screw this guy. I know we're gonna bring him in. We gotta some get point, him right? in here. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's good stuff. All right, let's uh, let's fly through a few things. Um, first show got the interviews done. Got like I mentioned, a lot of big guys um, coming up to join us the rest of the week. Hashtags FT Live. Uh, if you have questions or whatever, which I'll get to, there were a few questions. We'll do that for slap hands at the, at the end of this one. So uh, this is quick minor league minute. I'm just going to point out Matthew Liberator uh, took down the six first six batters or the only six batters that he faced 14 pitches. He's bounced around between um, triple a and, and the bigs multiple times last season. And phrase, did you play with him on, on the Olympic team? Yeah, he was uh, with me in the Olympic trials down in Port St. Lucie when we were trying to buy to get into go to the Olympics. Kratzy was on the team before that, couldn't pick us up. I appreciate it, Kratzy. Come on, man. But at the end of the day, this guy, he's, he's got a Randy Johnson look to him from the left side. He has a nasty breaking ball, throws pretty hard. He was our number one in the trials. He was the guy we leaned on. He played in the final game when we beat Venezuela. Um, he's a guy I'm, I'm going to be looking forward to um, – you know, to tote that rubber, man. Him and uh, and Wayno, man, watch out. He's going to have a really good season. I can't wait to see, you know, what's in store for him. And now it's his lock basically for him to get on the team and just to go play. He's, he's a guy that doesn't worry about much. Grip it and rip it. And um, he's going to attack the zone, man. I can't wait to see what's in store for him. And uh, people are going to love watching him. He's got the pauses in the delivery, right? Yeah, he, he, start, he does. He, every once in a while, he'll bring the pause in and – Throw that hammer down, frame it up, AJ, for him. Help the young man out. Hell yeah. 16th overall pick 2018. Uh, it was three spots ahead of Nolan Gorman, and now they're, uh, they're teammates. But those two were childhood friends and all of that. Uh, Liberator debuted um, last year on May 21st. So um, good depth for the Cardinals in terms of their, their starting pitching. All right. Um, let's go to a little social media action, shall we? Kratzy, you're all over this. Let's start with... Uh, what, the, what was the old show? What they call? Oh, Cribs. Let, let's start with, with our guy. Um, oh, before. Oh, sorry. Before we get to that, Kratzy, this you, you got to call me out for this because you're going to do this every damn day, and we want people to realize, especially the diehard fans, what's going on here. Talk about the uh, the hats. Give us the lowdown on how many damn teams you've, you've played on and how many times you've moved in life. And now you get to host a show from your house. It's huge. It's huge. I barely got to stay in one place for all of spring training some years. So 
being able to stay in, on this show in my house for a long time at that plays. No, I, I, yeah, I, I think, I think Claudia, our, our producer said, I'm, I'm not going to be changing the hats out every day. That might get a little overwhelming, but no, well, you should. I think you should change the hats every day. I like that. We'll take it up. We'll take it up with Claudia. Hell, you played for enough damn teams. You could you could do it for like seven years straight. Yeah, exactly. have the same I one. I think I thought about putting them all on my table here in front of me, but you know it wouldn't be. I, I have more hats than AJ has bobbleheads, but it would get a little <laughs> out of control. But we got the Columbus Clippers. Ring your bells if you have played in Columbus. So we had the throwback Clippers jersey here. Oh, Clippers Fraze, hat. Fraze is ringing. You right. played with them, right? I played against them. Played against them. Oh, against them. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful stadium. Beautiful. Talk about small park. Woo. <laughs> hey, it's a good All way to get out of there. Why. I like it. All right, now let's do some social media. Um, we're going to try this out. First show, appreciate you hanging with us, too. Um, we got some things to throw up there. Are we ready? Do we have it? Let's go. So we're starting off with a grand tour. It's good. I just was looking at a little real estate. I might actually have to get rid of my spot and go for this one. So if you're listening yes, on the please, podcast, yes, please, please get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying. Uh, I'm enjoying my current home, uh, the Prusinski household. No, I, I got a spot, I think. But um, that's Mookie Betts's uh, crib. Uh, if anyone's interested, the listing price looks like it's about ten million bucks, half acre lot. Yeah, let's show it again, please. Let's run through the tour and, and really fantastic job by the real estate agent taking the pictures staging beautifully done you got the gate just in case the pup's trying to run upstairs and cause problems nice looks good i'm sure mookie's probably upgrading maybe going from 10 to 20 um but 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 it's for sale uh Kratzy, in case you're looking for a spot in la yeah i'm good i i'm, I'm more of a renter kind of guy and i actually tried to get kicked off of teams where the rent was too much so i don't really know how to i mean i'll, I'll come i'll come to a team party i'm sure mookie's hosting team parties he's got the child safety gate up there and you know so my pup's not going to run upstairs but my question would be what's upstairs that I, you don't want my dog up there poking through yeah that see that's the story inside the story what's with the closed gate what's going yeah, but on it's a child it's a child gate. i know i, I want know. the child to go up he's there got and possibly fall you guys are just bad people <laughs> that's all there is to it bad people how about kratzy just trying to sneak by a, oh i tried to get booted from a team because the rent was too high what the heck going on there i understand that yeah, you can't that. be you can't be playing you can't be making a league minimum playing in San Francisco and actually house your family in anything other than a one bedroom. Mm -hmm. Like you're not it's just it's not gonna it's a long season. You need your space, you need a you need that's why I enjoyed Milwaukee so much. Rent was simple. You know, you pay about fifteen hundred a month. You get a nice three-bedroom place about fifteen minutes from the ballpark, the wife doesn't get caught in traffic. San Francisco you're never getting to the games. You're living way out. You're not, you can't live downtown unless you're on like a Pablo Sandoval deal. And you know, it's, it's, it's grinder, man. You gotta, you gotta make the 10 million just to be able to, uh, to afford to live in some of those cities. I mean, Hey, listen, I'm afraid, phrase you're a bonus baby. So you don't understand this, but uh, no. you know, when I was in the minor leagues, you know, we used to go to target and Walmart and we get the biggest TV we could get for the, for the five of us in our two bedroom. And we take it back on the 89th day <laughs> she and get our money back. And then we go to the next, the other Walmart, buy one for the rest of the season. And at the end of the season, we take it back and get our money back. <laughs> as long as someone could float it on their credit card for the 89 days. Yeah. <coughs> save same money. With, Did they same mark with that the blow down? Be like day 89, I'm taking it back. Because well, 90 day return policy. Yeah. You know, this is before people would buy them for the Super Bowl. So we'd buy it. We'd go in and we'd buy it, take it, put it up. That was our TV for everyone to watch TV in our, you know, our, apartment 89th day oh gosh i gotta run back run it <laughs> run it back to walmart it's next day go to a different walmart get another tv bring it back around the end of the year i don't like it i don't like it <laughs> you, <dump> it <laughs> exactly. no, you keep the box uh, what, and everything what was the problem on day 80 see i wish i was like the behind the register of oh, sir what was the problem on day 89 uh, what what happened there I don't make the policies. I just follow them. <laughs> Roll, no questions man. asked. No questions yeah. asked. Target doesn't. As long as you got the receipt. You take oh. diapers back. Already got poop in them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from. No idea. All right. Uh, let's jump to our, our fan of the day. Um, and this is from, from Pucks. 
little hockey action. Again, if, if you're listening, you can see this on YouTube and we'll post the whole thing after we're running live here. This, this kid's crushing. Um, oh, man. What is that? Orange soda? And, and the reaction, apparently, just finished is, let's go! <laughs> oh, man. Is so, that a bubble? They, who, I can't see the logo. No, I'm good. digging that jersey. I'm waiting for the burp, man. He's oh, got yeah. caffeine in there, man. Yeah, hell yeah, baby. Well, that's like at I mean the the how many times do we get this during baseball season? At least like once every two weeks, fan catches a ball in the cup, chugs chugs it. So kids are catching on. It's a beautiful thing, man. I ain't wasting the ball or the beer if one lands in my cup. Why? What do you mean? Wasting the ball? I'm just take the hey, ball. You're getting more beer on the ball. You know, these balls are expensive. You know, it could be a special ball. <laughs> You never know. It might be one you throw to throw to a dog or something. It might be worse. Something. You never know. You know. Yeah. And then the beer's twenty two dollars. So you want to sip it and enjoy? Yeah, it? Yeah, I want to. You know, slowly, <laughs> slowly take that beer down. Slowly kick back. All right, let's uh, let's run a little slap hands here to finish things off. Um, so we're gonna try this out each day. And Kratz, you're probably gonna have to explain it because if you're a fan at home, you're like slap hands. What is he talking about? Yeah, man. You go out for the ninth inning. If you're winning home team, you're looking to close it out. Only one team gets to slap hands at the end of the day. That means you got the win. So you all get to slap hands. You know, everyone does, you know, maybe, you know, they do a jump turn, they do the fake, you know, the, this one to the underneath, whatever your, whatever your shtick is, AJ probably just like grunts at you after you win. Like, Shake? yeah. Oh, I'm old school. I give handshakes. Typical. Whatever. We can't call this handshake rule. Anyway, my slap hands. My slap hands for today, mm -hmm. we might have six guests on, on our next show. I don't know, but you can't get two better human beings than we had on today. And Teddy B and Adam Wainwright. No. Agreed. Solid, solid first outing there for sure. Yeah, this was great. I got, let me, let me get a couple questions for my slap hands. Oh, and I'll also, Kratzy, we have, uh, we have one more little thing to show you. Um, little Tito Francona at the dentist action. Um, Zach Mizell from The Athletic covers uh, Cleveland. Terry Francona got his tooth fixed yesterday following last week's pasta mishap uh, that resulted in him swallowing a tooth chunk. Francona quote, on dentists, Dr. Braun, my dad too, I don't understand why they feel the need when they have both hands down your throat to ask you how the team is going to be. <laughs> Unreal. The absolute power move at the dentist is just saying whatever the hell you want, and then you're just doing work on them so they can't say shit. My father-in-law was a dentist, so it's very applicable. But And he actually would talk about the fact that he loved being able to ask people questions and tell his dad jokes, you know, have like a fake <laughs> booger hanging out of his nose as he's leaning over. Like he loves, I, I think there's, there's dentists that, that definitely, definitely enjoy that part of it. You know, get deep in there, have the mouth wide open and you give a ho, 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 ho. <laughs> well, and most of the time you're like, if you're the dentist, you get smart about it. You can say whatever you want. And then you just get the, the only thing you can do most of the time is like, oh, uh -huh, you know, or uh -uh. No, when I go to the dentist, I get mad because the dentist, you pay like $700 to go see the dentist. The girl, the lady, the, the, the hygienist, whoever it is, does the cleaning. Yep. And then the dentist walks in and goes, oh, oh, oh you're good. Thanks. I'm Dude. like, that's it? <laughs> First of AJ. all, do you, not, do you not have dental insurance? Well, yeah, but still. <laughs> you're paying $700? <laughs> my, my insurance is still yeah, no. I mean, what, what's this guy? Dental Come on, insurance? AJ. No, but my insurance is still paying the $700. No, they're not. Well, whatever they're paying, still. They're That's paying. another show, but they are not paying the $700. Well, whatever they're paying. That's how the, insurance works. You they literally, say, hey. You literally that, see that's... the dentist for 30 seconds. And he's like, that's how much know. money this guy's got, Scott. He goes, Here, here's the cash. Thanks for the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, he's got the, he's got the assistant with the money bag. Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll pay in cash at the counter. But also, <laughs> yeah. if the dentist is saying you're good that means you're good like no i know your but teeth still, are good so you're at least fine. like at least give me the fake like with the little mirror thing like uh -huh. yeah but then i'm gonna be worried that i might have a problem like the thing is there's probably poor fans out there that are listening to this right now going um aj the dentist spent three hours with me and well, said i was a disaster I don't know. so you're just you're just Floss. blessed Floss out there people <laughs> aj <laughs> wants that aj wants the hygienist to come to his house clean his teeth boom we're done or maybe on the ninth hole after you know sitting at the <laughs> Sitting at the turn, just like, hey, fix my teeth. I don't need to see the dentist. You just come and do, 
you know, just a private, a private cleaning. <laughs> That's how it works down here. You can get, they'll come over, they'll do massages here, haircuts, they'll check your teeth, whatever it is. You just, there's Change a service oil. for it. And Change there's a reason oil. why all you snowbirds are moving to Florida. Yeah. You know. Also, hey, come here and do a, a, a digital show at my spot. So, all right, let me, let me throw one in here. Um, so we have a, a question from, from Dinger. I think this was on YouTube, but Connor, our, our social media star behind the scenes, will let me know. Uh, does Tatis, this was back to our Padres talk earlier, and we told him we would ask this um, to you guys. Does Fernando Tatis Jr. acclimate in the clubhouse normally again, or what does that process look like? I, I, I think he has to. I think he is from what happened last year. I think he has to just be whatever they want him to be. He has to mold into that that player that fits right in. I mean, what what is it? Thirty home run guy. Uh, you know, he's going to be in the outfield now. Be that team player and, and focus on him and getting back and good kudos with with the players that he let down. So his focus is going to be on playing baseball and that. First and foremost, there shouldn't be anything else going on with them. <clears throat> Excuse me, but yeah, mold back in. They're going to have a great ball club. Don't try and be too big. Don't try and be too low. Find that happy medium and work from there, man. You're a great player and show them again why you are that great player and, and just move on. And I think that's what Manny Machado, he's going to be the leader and he's going to focus on helping him out uh, throughout the long run here this long season. And people forget quickly. No, I mean, if you play. If he hits. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He He's not playing well, they're going to talk shit, right? And there's a lot of people that people forget no their past about like doing stuff. So, yeah. Exactly. Well, if he well does, said. If he does, I mean, <laughs> if he does what he's supposed to do, nobody will care. And, and the teammates will, there will be a little, I'm sure there already has been a little bit of kickback, feet, you know, whatever you want to call it. Like from, clearing the air, basically? No, saying, but or? there's going to be some, there's going to be some pushback from his teammates early. Okay. Just because he, I mean, he's missed a whole year. Yeah. For stupid stuff. No, no, you're right. But if, if he starts off the year with 10 homers in the first month of the season. They'll forget. Yeah, they'll forget quick. Sell the fans, sell everyone else. Um, clap it up for the crew behind the scenes. First ever show. We're freaking live. Twitch, YouTube, all of that. Am I still in the shot? Yeah. Slap hands. Boys, we did it. Adam Wainwright, Ted Barrett. Hell yeah, baby. We're on every freaking day this month. 11 a.m. Eastern time. Sometimes we'll go to 12. Sometimes we'll go to one. Big ass interviews coming up the rest of the week. Follow us on all the socials. Thanks for watching Foul Territory. Hashtag FT Live if you want to talk to the guys. We will see you every freaking day. That means, what is today? Wednesday? See you Thursday morning.